story involving police accountability. Danny Panzella explains. In Louisville, Kentucky, Louis Mossy came to the aid of a woman being brutally attacked by her husband, Jonathan Osborne, an officer of the Louisville Metro Police Department for 10 years. He had her in a choke hold and he was standing behind her and her feet were barely touching the ground and I didn't know if he was trying to kill her or what. Mossy then tackled Osborne, breaking his own wrist, but managing to keep him subdued until police arrived 10 minutes later. Normally, somebody's quick to grab your phone out and just record it, but I just can't bear to see somebody being treated like that. Osborne now faces charges of aggravated battery, domestic battery, resisting law enforcement, criminal recklessness, and public intoxication. He's currently free on a $30,000 bond. For more about police accountability, visit thelibertybeat.com. An offshoot of the hacktivist collective Anonymous took down Twitter and Facebook accounts connected to recruiting efforts for the Islamic State. A video released by the Red Colt team as part of Op ISIS details plans to take down websites, shut down accounts, and expose the terrorist group. Red Colt explains that the Anons involved in the campaign are composed of Muslims, Christians, and Jews, hackers, crackers, hacktivist fishers, agents, spies, or just the guy next door. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support for Liberty Beat also comes from the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Hear from speakers such as Charlie Schramm, Dr. Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, and Catherine Bleich. March 28th and 29th at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. Tickets on sale now at texasbitcoinconference.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, February 9th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. An alliance of indigenous and environmental groups have publicly condemned the recent approval of planting of genetically engineered trees. The campaign to stop GE trees denounced the U.S. government and the Department of Agriculture for failing to heed the calls of public opposition to the first genetically engineered tree. Last month, it was revealed that the USDA told GE tree company ArborGen that the agency would not regulate the tree and would not stop the planting. On Friday, a British surveillance court ruled that the nation's spy agency acted outside the law by hiding details of its Internet surveillance operations. The investigatory Powers Tribunal stated the government communications headquarters had violated human rights laws by hiding information related to accessing information collected by the American National Security Agency. The challenge, brought by Privacy International and Liberty, cites documents released by whistleblower Edward Snowden. A technology safety advocacy group is launching the Turn It Off for Kids initiative to educate parents and consumers about the dangers of wireless radiation from mobile devices. The National Association for Children and Safe Technology has launched the initiative in response to a number of studies indicating possible risk of tumors related to heavy daily use of cell phones and radio frequency electromagnetic fields radiation. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. For details, visit libertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, February 9th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty. Buying a burger might start taking a bite out of your wallet. Meat prices skyrocketed this week after the place that makes the meat revealed that the cow smashing machine is all beefed up. This machine has beef way up in it. The basher, the meat collector, even the main meat hole, all of it. Lousy would be. The cow smashing machine is an integral part of the meat making process, taking whole big cows into one end with all different meats falling out the other. Supermarket chains warn that unless we start smashing cows again soon, we could face a serious beef shortage. The beef industry is working hard to unclog the cow smasher, but says it could take several days or even weeks to scoop all the beef that's crammed up in there. Until it's fixed, meat-hungry Americans can take solace in the fact that the chicken grinder is working at full capacity, just completely tearing up all those chickens, and the pig machine is porking out hardcore. Up next, bluesmen find a rising trend of their babies done leaving on that their old devil train. 
This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free here. 855 450 free is the number. And that is, br- and uh, you can, of course, call in about anything you want. It's not brought to you by anybody except for Free Talk Live and LRN.FM. Uh, joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian, Derek J, and Mark. All right, of course, you can uh, join us on the phones. You can also join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. So feel free to uh, drop in on us there. You can send a contact request. And it will be approved once we notice it. And then after that, you can easily call us on Skype. Uh, Last night at the very end of the show, we sort of teased a story that we didn't really get a chance to get into. And that was of a state representative who has committed civil disobedience right inside the state capitol, inside the, uh, the state house legislative office building where they have these usually very boring hearings about various different legislation that's being proposed. Uh, In New Hampshire, things are a little unusual here compared to a lot of places where every single piece of legislation is given a public hearing. So if there's some sort of piece of legislation you want to come and testify to, um, to these legislators, you can do that. There are 800-some bills that have been put forth this legislative session, and every single one of those 800 bills is going to have a public hearing. Airing. Yeah, but sometimes they happen at the same time, right? That's so, true. You know, if you want to speak on one, you sometimes might not be able to speak on another. That's correct. You do have to prioritize, and of course, it helps to have a large movement of liberty-oriented people who are all in the same general area, like the Free State Project is doing, getting liberty-minded folks to move to New Hampshire. Because then, if you've got more than one liberty-minded person at the state house, you can have people in different rooms testifying on different things at different times, or at the same time, rather. So uh, we've been we've managed to do this actually already, even you know at this early point in the game with the Free State Project, and I think that's really exciting because we're you know we're only at about ten percent of the total number of people that are expected to move here, and so that means that there could be a whole lot more participation. But already the level of participation is fairly high, and I'm not even and I'm just counting Free Staters. These are the people who've moved to New Hampshire, as as the three of us on the show here tonight have done. There's also New Hampshire natives. And the people who moved here before the Free State Project to achieve more freedom, uh, the natives like Kyle Tasker, some of them are elected to state representative. Now, Kyle Tasker is a young guy. He's probably in his mid to late 20s. He's in at least his second term because he just got reelected in 2014. And he's a B-plus rated state rep, meaning that the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, which is an independent group that rates all of the bills as to whether or not they're liberty-oriented, and they also rate the legislators themselves, all 400 of them. Actually, I think they include the senators, so 24, 425. 24, I believe, uh, senators. 25, yeah. I'm sorry, 24. 24. Yeah, so uh, they rate them all. Does the executive council get rated too? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, They... They're not really working on the executive councils. Like they don't pass bills, from what I understand. No, so. but they do. They can prevent a bill from going through. What the heck is an executive I'm not council? Sure just... about that. I thought they only authorized spending. Right. Well, I mean, if a bill has spending attached to it, I think it's only over a certain amount, though. I could be wrong about that. Right. How many councils are there? Who are all these people? There They're not authorizing a... all spending, right? They're only authorizing over a certain amount. There's another layer of government in New Hampshire that doesn't that is beyond the Senate and the House, which is oh. the Executive Council. <laughs> okay. and, uh, they meet with the governor. Yeah, and things that are of a certain amount have to go through them in order to get passed. Is that right? That's my understanding. I don't know for sure. If you want to correct us, please feel free at 855-450-FREE. But Kyle Tasker's a native, and he got a B-plus rating as a very liberty-oriented rep. Not quite an A, but darn close. Um, I don't know what he's messed up on, but you know nobody's perfect. And he's, uh, he's a great guy because I've seen him in action a number of times in the criminal justice committee. And of course, the Criminal Justice Committee is the committee that hears all the marijuana proposals. So any proposal for decriminalization, medical, uh, legalization, it goes in front of the the Criminal Justice Committee. Mm -hmm. And for a few years, Kyle was actually on that committee. I think he's been moved to a different committee now. But in the video that I posted over at freekeen.com, 
uh, Kyle is actually speaking to the Criminal Justice Committee, and he actually brings with him some items of uh, a, a unique kind of interest. I've never seen this happen before, and I'd always hoped something like this would happen because I love civil disobedience. And Derek J., I know that you're in the same boat with Big me. Big fan. This. Yeah, yep. we, we made a movie uh, together called Derek J.'s Victimless Crime Spree, and nobody has yet done until Kyle Tasker that I know of civil disobedience inside the state house. Now, in your right. movie, it's always been outside the state house right. where people, you know, gather around the steps of the Capitol building and openly smoke cannabis every I mean, year. There have even been l- legislators who openly smoke cannabis. Wasn't there. that last well, year when that happened? I think that was. I don't remember, but yeah. I, I know I've seen it on video. Now, I had uh, done what I thought to be civil disobedience in the state house uh, a couple of years ago when I handled oh. a plastic. Picnic knife. Uh, Now, it was my understanding of the reading of the law, and as I interpreted the reading of the law to the Criminal Justice Committee, um, that a just me handling a steak knife in the state of New Hampshire was a felony. Now, it is true that I cannot handle a knife, but I can only handle not handle a knife if I am using it in a deadly fashion, according Mm -hmm. to the law. So it's an extra little uh, uh, layer of charges that can be laid on somebody who's been convicted of a felony. So knives, not a problem. Now, a Billy's, a on the other hand, is always a felony for me, and I'm not sure what a Billy's is. Like a Billy club. It's a right? stick, right? But does the stick have to be black and have like a grooved handle? Yeah, you to can't build any sticks. No picking up no, sticks, no, no picking firewood. Up sticks. <laughs> and, and what about you raise pigs? So in a deadly fashion, that means you can't slaughter your own pigs, right? No, that's not true. Um, a deadly in this circumstance refers to humans. I okay. did check on that. All right. So I can have a bow and arrow, but I can't have a black powder pistol, for uh-huh. instance. Makes sense. Yeah. If you get to see, by the way, on... Uh, Bow, bows and arrows aren't deadly. Uh, Not unless they're employed against humans. I see. Same with knives. Uh, But if you've got a chance to see this video, this guy who's uh, shooting arrows back like they did back in the day, he can like shoot pie pans out of the sky, three of them, throw them up and shoot them in in short order. Yeah, I saw that video. It's amazing. Pretty pretty neat. I've also seen someone critiquing it as BS. uh, Really? As well. I haven't heard that yet. Yeah. I don't know what the truth is. It's the internet. Who knows? So anyway, back to the story here from uh, freekeen.com, and I'm, I'm hoping this gets picked up elsewhere. I put this story out as a press release because I think what Kyle did here in this committee was really noteworthy. And I'm glad you reminded me, Derek J., of the fact that legislators, at least one that I know of, has smoke, have smoked cannabis in front of the state house. Yeah. But I don't know of anyone doing civil disobedience legislator uh, a, a legislator doing civil disobedience inside the state house. That I don't know of happening in the past, um, but I'm glad you brought out, Mark, that you've done it in the state house. I wouldn't say I'd done it. I thought I did it. Well, I know Daryl did recently, our Friday night co host. He actually challenged the uh, one of the bureaucrats from the Secretary of State's office to arrest him for taking a picture of his ballot. Apparently in New Hampshire, it's illegal to take what they're calling now a ballot selfie, where if you write down, you know, you mark your voting, what, you know, fill in the blanks kind of thing, and then you take a picture of how you're actually voting, that's apparently illegal. So Daryl brought in a photo of his ballot and displayed it and passed it around for the entire committee to see the proposal. The proposed legislation in that case was to eliminate that law. And he actually challenged the deputy of the Secretary of State's office to call the state police and have him arrested. So I guess uh, activists have done civil disobedience inside the state house, but very, very little. And uh, and this was fairly risky because in this case, a state police officer was actually sitting right behind Ty- Kyle Tasker, observing him throughout his entire testimony, where he brings out cookies, a vaporizer, and a bottle which is presumably full of cannabis tincture. Now, uh, the tincture is stuff that you can sort of uh, just use. Uh, you put it in your mouth, you swallow it, basically. That's like and what they used to have in drugstores like 100 years ago, right? Yeah, it comes in a little dropper bottle, a little yeah. blue dropper used to bottle. be legal. Right. And, uh, and so it was fascinating, and I've actually got the video footage here. We're going to play it because I, I think the audio is pretty amusing. I can't really do the hearing justice by recounting it because some of the jokes that are told by the state reps are, are actually pretty good. And so we'll share that with you here because the, the whole committee really just, they're already on board on this issue. They've been talked to so long for so many different, you know, there's so many different legalization, decrim bills, all these things have come in front of mostly the same committee over the years. And they've heard it all. They know that cannabis needs to be decrimmed or legalized. It's 
It's not their problem. It's been a problem with the Senate and uh, the governor. But it's an entertaining video. We'll play the audio coming up on Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free here and bring up whatever you'd like. 855-450-FREE is the number, and that's toll-free, 855 450 Three seven three three. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. You can actually get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners by creating content right there on the front page. You just submit whatever it is you think is interesting. Uh, what you know, maybe, maybe it's a news article or blog post, 
some kind of YouTube video. You submit it right there to the front page via our Reddit-based system, and uh, then other listeners can vote on it, whether they like or dislike. You get to vote on things as well, and then we'll know what you think is interesting. And it's hard for me to uh, imagine a better gift than Sherry's Berries. Valentine's Day is coming up in just days. We're at uh, well under, you know, under a week here. Your time is running out to get these delicious berries delivered straight to your loved one on Valentine's Day or before or after Valentine's Day. All we care about is you placing your order over at berries.com. Use code FTL or you will not get the special offer. The offer is or the offers rather because there's a, there's a there's one deal and then there's an even better deal. The first deal is Freshly dipped giant strawberries at $19.99. Dipped in chocolate, white milk, and dark chocolatey goodness, and topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, as well as nuts. You can go to berries.com to get yours starting at just $19.99, over a 40% savings. The way you do this is by clicking on the microphone and typing in our code, which is FTL. Plus, Free Talk Live listeners can double the berries for just $10 more. But again, you've got to use code FTL over at berries.com. These are some of the best berries you'll ever have. And, uh, I mean, the quality of the actual strawberries themselves are very good. Plus, the chocolate is also excellent on top. You really can't go wrong with this gift. Berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com. Use code FTL and hook yourself and your loved ones up with Sherry's Berries. And don't forget to do that extra 10 bucks to double the berries. You will not regret it. We'll get into the video here, the audio feed, which is very good from uh, the State House in New Hampshire, where a state representative committed civil disobedience right in front of a state police officer not just any state police officer, but one of the drug warrior cops. We'll tell you about it here in a moment and give you the audio. But first, Alma is on the line in Georgia. Alma, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hey, sweetie. Hey there. You know, uh, last week I couldn't pick you all up at all. I only get the full show on Saturday and Sunday on the radio station. And last night, I was waiting for it. They've been putting sports and mess on. Didn't come on. They put a new show on. So I called the radio station. No one was there. And uh, a few minutes later, it was about 30 minutes later, I didn't even leave a message. I get a telephone call back from the general manager. Mm-hmm. Well, this is at night time? Tied. You call yeah, him? Sunday night, too. Okay. We tied up big time. I said, well, I was in the middle of emailing you anyway. We tied up. I said, why'd you take them off? It's the only decent show that's on the radio on your station. <laughs> you took everything else off. And uh, he goes, well, they're too radical. I've had complaints. Now, let me tell you, you had a lot of callers from this, from Tallahassee, Florida, mm-hmm. 93.3. A lot have called y'all. I've listened because I listen a lot. So he told a lie, but I'm pretty sure who it was who was complaining because a name came up in the conversation. And he knows I don't. it's another radio show that I don't, me and him don't get along at all. Wait, you think but, uh, another radio show was complaining about Free Talk Live? He's on the same one, and he's he, all he does is talk. He loves the government's kill, 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 kill the Muslims and all this. Oh, no. He says, y'all are too radical. I said, well, you give me a radio show and I'll show you radical. They're not <laughs> radical. But well, I'm, I'm I don't think trying. the freedom message is radical. Do you guys? The radical position no. that uh, we should not uh, just go around the world blowing people up and be the world's police officer, you know? So what you're but saying is, what... Alma, I just want to be clear what you're saying. Are yeah. you claiming that Free Talk Live is no longer on weekdays in Tallahassee? No, it was not. They only put you on at 9 o'clock, and we got one hour that I might could talk to you. The rest of it was rerun. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, well, we're still on there. We've yeah, been on weeknights. Then... Well, hold on, Alma. Uh, on weeknights yeah. in Tallahassee, we're on from 9 until midnight. And so you're getting all three hours of the weekday show every single night. You're not missing anything. Um, yeah, but I can't. If I don't get on at seven, I don't get on the radio. No, I understand. I mean, you can obviously. It's more fun you're to not call on the there show. Anymore. Ian, you're not on there. They took you off. Okay. Well, you're not. You're not being very clear because first I okay. asked you if we were. Ask me a question. Ask me, and I'll tell you. Okay. Are we on from nine p.m. to midnight on uh, weekdays in Tallahassee? No. Okay. Okay. I'll have to check on that because that's shocking to me. It still shows it on the. It still shows. uh, You're not. They took you off completely. Well, we'll look into it, Alma. Thank you for the call. You can always listen online at freetalklive.com. I I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. I know it can be frustrating when that happens. Um, I'm hoping she was maybe mistaken because there 
we used to be on Sundays. Uh, we used to be on seven days a week in Tallahassee, but they yeah. pulled the show from Sundays. So something happened there, and uh, I don't know, maybe it's you know, some other show they had to put on or whatever. These things happen. Things change in the radio business. But I don't, I've never heard anything about us being off on weeknights, so I think she may be incorrect about that. I'm hoping she's incorrect about that. Tallahassee's a market we've been sort of on and off on over the years. This is actually our third radio station that we've been on in Tallahassee, WVFT out there. So hopefully she's incorrect, but I'll find out soon enough. Anyway, our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. You can, of course, join us online at freetalklive.com. Michael's in Ithaca, New York. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Oh, hey, guys. Hey. Um, well, I was calling because I kind of wanted to call out something, I believe it's Mark said, on the 5th, which was that he thought that stupid people shouldn't be allowed to vote. Yes. <laughs> Um, and I've been listening to the podcast, and I was kind of surprised that no one called to kind of dispute it, so I thought I could. Okay, okay go right please. ahead. Um, I, I was hoping him or Cantwell might be here today, but since I listened to the podcast, I wasn't totally sure. Yeah, it was uh, Cantwell uh, and I on the show, and we tend to whip each other up. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of wanted to ask why, why you would be uh, in favor of allowing the government to put those kind of regulations in place and open up what I think might be a Pandora's box where they end up just continuing to disallow others to vote until it's pretty much only their party. Yeah, I, th- I, I see the argument on the other side, but, um, you know, I the thing is, is no one's going to care whether I say this. And I always preface it with this uh, claim has really bad historical precedent, right? Like, you know, there was a time when governments gave out little tests to see whether people could vote, and they usually only gave them to black people, and uh, no one could pass the tests, right? And, like, not just, like, like if you go look at these tests online and you try to take one, you'll be like, I don't even know how to answer this. This doesn't, this question mm-hmm. doesn't even have an answer. So you would have been disqualified then? What's that? By that test. Likely everybody who, who was uh, given the test would have been disqualified. But what I said was, is I really think you should be able to tell me how many states are in the union. Tell me who the vice president is. Maybe uh, identify who currently holds the office for which you are, are voting. You know, like some relatively I'd be disqualified. easy, good uh, <laughs> civics questions. I mean, y- you don't want people to have uh, IDs to vote either. I think that people are like... Way too many people with really bad opinions get to vote, and it bothers me. But just because they may have some bad bad opinions on some things, does that mean they should be disqualified from having? Well, any honestly, kind of say everybody and... should be disqualified from voting, frankly, because you shouldn't be Hang able to on, tell Michael, other people how can, to live. We can bring it back here and continue the discussion because I'm on your side on this. I think people should be allowed to vote if there's going to be a times? coercive system in place. You'd like them to vote We're five coming times. Coming up here, it's Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy. Until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's TogetherSave.com. TogetherSave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. TogetherSave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at TogetherSave.com. This is novelist Tom Robbins. When my mother was diagnosed with glaucoma, her conservative Virginia physician told her there was only one treatment that might ease her pain and save her eyesight. That treatment was medical marijuana, which he could not prescribe. I offered to get her some and teach her how to use it effectively, but my father objected because marijuana was against the law. So my mother, who loved to read and walk in nature, was condemned to grow cruelly, unnecessarily blind. Tragedies like this happen all the time, 
but they don't have to keep happening. To learn more about medical marijuana, call the Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or visit them on the web at mpp.org. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free. Bring up whatever you'd like. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. Coming up, the audio of the video that I posted a couple days ago over at freekeen.com of Kyle Tasker, a state representative who committed civil disobedience the other day in uh, in the state house inside the legislative office building, and it was pretty entertaining. I'll uh, share that with you here in a moment. But we've actually got Michael on the line with us in Ithaca, and he's calling you out, Mark. He says that uh, he's upset about you saying that stupid people shouldn't be able to vote. Those are your words, not mine. You do want to restrict the uh, the ability to vote to spe- specific things like you want them to know specific things like who's the president and f- what are the 50 states and you went through a I'd like a, a little list civic you, like I'd, I'd like you to be able to pass a citizenship test to be able to get sort of registered to vote well I'd like to talk a little bit more about that and Michael is still with us so we're going to get to him but you've also heard about Bitcoin and perhaps blockchains as well but what does it all mean for you you can head to the second annual Texas Bitcoin conference happening at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin on March 28th and 29th. That's coming up here in just a matter of weeks. So go and get registered now over at texasbitcoinconference.com. You'll get to see great keynote speakers like George Gilder as well as uh, Sambala Nair will be speaking there. He's He's IBM's architect of their blockchain technology. Plus, Bitcoiners like Jason King, Vitalik Buterin, and Charlie Shrem will be there as well as many more. Go to texasbitcoinconference.com and get your tickets there March 28th and 29th. We'll look forward to seeing you because Mark and I, we broadcast live from the event last year and we will be there again this year. Plus, you can get a discount off your tickets. They're already affordable at 150 bucks, but you can knock $25 off by using code FTL. Plus, when you use code FTL at TexasBitcoinConference.com, another 25 bucks goes to Sean's Outpost, a great Bitcoin-based charity operating in Florida, helping the homeless folks out there. TexasBitcoinConference.com, March 28th and 29th at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin. We'll look forward to seeing you there. And don't forget code FTL when you get registered for those tickets. Michael, you're back with us in Ithaca. Why is Mark wrong about his idea to restrict what he calls stupid people from voting? 
I think he's wrong because everyone, as long as we're voting, everyone should be able to have a say in what's going on. If you can check the box on your own, you should be allowed to vote. Now, first off, I, I don't believe anybody should be able to vote, right? Like, I think that the idea of voting on other people's lives and things that happen in them is ridiculous, that everybody's ignorant of what's going on in other people's lives. Um, so you shouldn't be able to do that. But if we're going to have this institution of voting, um, let me walk you through it for a second. So there, everybody, in, in every arena, you have your geniuses, right? The people that are very good at doing this thing or that thing. So... And usually you identify them as the top 2% of whatever area. There are people who are, you know, the top 2% of sort of knowing about government, knowing about fiscal policy, knowing about uh, the politicians. I don't even know if I fit in this top 2%, by the way. But there's, um, you know, these people are out there. They're geniuses when it comes to sort of knowing about the government. And I guess what bothers me is is that somebody who I, I told the story on Wednesday, and I'll tell it again. Um, I, one Liberty Forum, I was there uh, taking. I took a decided to go into the spa and um, hang out in the jacuzzi, and a gal was there, who an older lady who uh, worked at a local uh, place for people with mental disabilities, and she was very proud to note that she took the uh, the folks with the mental disabilities to vote every single time there was a vote out, and she told them to vote Democrat. Whoa. And so for every, I don't know how many, I don't know how many people go in this van with this lady, but there are, let's call it 15, 15 people who whose opinions are studied, who have paid attention to the, they read the papers, they know what's going on. Now, they may have different opinions as to how things go, but they have paid attention to the issues. 15 of them have their boats knocked out, made completely worthless by this van full of mentally disabled people that this lady is just bringing to the polls. <laughs> well, that might be true, but I wonder how many... Uh, votes have won based off of the 17. Yeah, and also, I mean, are you presuming here, Mark, that uh, stupid people won't vote Republican? I mean, that sounds no, pretty that's ridiculous. Not what I'm to, okay, that's what, what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is is that a an intelligent person's vote, be it Democrat or Republican, is sort of canceled out by a, another person who has no business voting, frankly. They don't have business driving a car. You don't have business voting, um, unless you're perhaps old or something like that. Uh, what if you just don't like to drive? It, but, right. You may not be able to drive. I'm talking about you are mentally <laughs> not qualified to drive According a car. According to you, you're mentally not qualified I don't qualify people to drive cars, yeah. Ian. I don't hand out the driver's licenses. The government does. Yeah. And so you want the government to decide who can vote? How do you figure on that, Mark? Who the comes up with the criteria? The government currently decides who's, who votes. Who comes up with the criteria as to who passes your little test. You think they're going to put you in charge? They probably won't, but they do have a citizenship test, and I have advocated for a citizenship test to so be So how long do I have people... to spend in order to go vote? I mean, it's inconvenient oh, no. hold on, right hold on, now. Hold on, hold on. You don't have to go vote, fill out the citizenship every time you vote, just when you register to vote. Oh, okay. How's that? So if I get brain damaged later on, then I can still go vote? Is that right? As long as you don't move from your home district. Michael, do you uh, want to say anything else to Mark on this? Uh... The the other part that I wanted to mention is this is the second you start to allow exceptions for voting like this, it's it's just another step into the direction to allow the government to uh, stop more people from voting. Soon it'll be the libertarians, and then a lot with the felons, and then the dumb people, then the libertarians, because you know they don't have the best interests of the state in mind. So obviously they shouldn't be allowed to vote. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, slippery slope argument there. I appreciate it. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. What do you think, Derek J., on Mark's viewpoint here? It's tough because if I still believed in the state, then Mark's idea would be closer to the ideal. Like, I wouldn't want um, people who have no idea what's going on having any say of what the government should be doing. Uh, you know, that impacts my life, and it already bothers me that people vote my freedom away. Sure. So I would prefer, you know, I, I maybe I'm wrong, but I think that people who are more informed would make better decisions. And if you just don't have the ability to be informed, you shouldn't be making decisions for other people. Mm, yeah, but how do you determine who's informed? That's a tough one. There are some measures of uh, maybe like, 
I, I really don't know. I mean, if you go by well, March requirements, but, then you're cutting a lot of people this, out. You cut me out. I'm already, fairly informed. The government? No, I don't think you do. Um, you don't think I'm fairly informed? You no, don't think I, I don't research think that who, you'll be cut out. I, th- I think that. Yeah, you said you said you have to identify who currently holds the office. No, I, I was just I don't know that listing stuff. off some things. Uh, what I said oh. was I gave a criteria, and it's very firm. The government currently restricts people who cannot pass a citizenship test from voting because they restrict them from having citizenship. So people who are not citizens cannot vote. All I propose is if you happen to have been born on the geopolitical landmass known as the United States and somehow get citizenship you know, with your birth pa- papers, that you qualify in the same, we- same way that people who have chosen to live here— Does that mean you have to swear an oath like a citizenship does? I don't think does? you should have to swear oaths. I think that uh, this country was founded by people who refused to swear oaths, so therefore— But don't they make the people taking a citizenship— uh, test have to swear to be a U.S. citizen, in good this, little citizen, or something I suspect, like that. Well, I, all I can tell you is, in this state, you do not have to swear to anything. Mm-hmm. You don't. I, you can affirm what you say is true, yeah. and that's what I do as a Quaker. I will not swear an oath. I don't mean that. I mean like an oath to the state, like how a citizen is expected to have a duty of allegiance. You know, do, is I, that what you want them to do? I find that a real problem. Any allegiance yeah. votes, um, so you got a problem with oaths that. and that sort of thing. The thing is, you're not going to write these requirements, Mark. And I so understand. you're pushing. Essentially, what you're doing is you're pushing for more government here. Oh, now it's more government. Yeah. The fact that fewer people can vote is more government. Yeah. Well, it would be because you would need to have some executive body, right, who would come up with this test, and it would be the different test already all over. Exists. Well, then you're going to be asking people to swear an oath of allegiance to the United States. That's not part of the test. It's just a test to see whether or not you Mm. can swear an oath to the United States. It's going to invent some kind of bureaucracy where they have to hand out these tests. They have to collect them. They have to ensure their legitimacy. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's going to be a whole Why would they have to do that? I mean, currently— To administer this— Hold on, hold on. Currently, the the INS has a stack of these uh, tests someplace. All they'd have to do is print out a few Mm. more and then hand them out to the— Oh, that's all they'll have to do, right? Because government just keeps themselves really small and— uh, when you ask the government to do something, they just really respect your request to stay real small, Do you want small, a bus right? full of mentally challenged people voting? I don't really care, Mark. I know you don't. 855, <laughs> Some people just want to watch the world All I burn. care about is whether or not people cooperate with the government. More coming up. It's Free Talk Live. The vet had them on antibiotics as well as steroids. Nothing worked. The vet had given them a cortisone. The vet prescribed an antihistamine. The vet thought that Molly was just old. Probably three to four hundred dollars every four months. At least five thousand dollars in vet bills. All total, twenty-seven hundred dollars in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Eight five nine four two eight one thousand. The omega three fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive of enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The ingredients are what the veterinarian said he was lacking. Within two days, his scratching, it seemed to go away. After five weeks, her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. Molly's gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Oh, yes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free and bring up anything you want. 855-450-FREE. We're talking about a controversial proposal from Mark here. He's saying that people with mental deficiencies, people who are uninformed as well, uh, should not be allowed to vote. And well, I imagine there's going to be a lot of people on side. My proposal's changed a little bit. My proposal is currently that a that everybody has to have passed a U.S. Uh, citizenship exam at least once in order to be able to vote. Well, but even if I don't pass that exam, they're still going to force me to pay their taxes, right? You, people, I really don't like the idea who, of being who are a citizen. Here, this, here in this country, legally and illegally, who are not citizens, still pay taxes. I really can't do anything about that. Well, taxation without representation isn't that one of the, uh, the, the, the like the primary concepts behind the the government oh, in the United States? Oh, it would horrify States? me if non-citizens went to Washington D.C. and blew it up. I'm sorry. It would horrify me if uh, non-citizens went to Washington D.C. and blew it up. You mean bombed Washington, D.C.? I'm just saying. You said taxation without representation causes revolutions, right? Well, go ahead. Have a revolt. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Well, anyway, what you're arguing for here, Mark, is that you know, in this system that we have, you think that there should be restrictions placed, serious restrictions placed on who can vote. And I think Derek Jay pointed out something that's important here. I touched on the idea that what you're proposing is calling for bigger government. You balked at that, and Derek Jay pointed out that they're likely going to have to— create some kind of bureaucracy or hire more bureaucrats to administer these tests to people. And uh, you just blew that off like it was nothing. Like, oh, we'll just hand out some extra tests, get some copies from the uh, immigration department and just hand them out. Well, no. Here, when you go into uh, when you go into the city clerk's office in New Hampshire to register to vote, there's an old lady who, uh, at least here in, in Keene, there's a nice old lady who will take your information and she will fill out your form for you. So are you proposing that the bureaucrats administer the test to you verbally, or will you be allowed to take the test on your own, in which case you could then have a cheat sheet of some sort to uh, get through the questions fairly easily? The little old lady can keep an eye on you while you take the test. Okay, so like a classroom then. You want to have a room you set up? You could just sit in there with your number two pencil and fill it out. Mm -hmm. Surely it and can't be that long. How, yeah. many, how many questions could this thing possibly be? I don't know. And I don't know. Why she, don't you look it up? She's getting know. like 20 an hour I'm meanwhile, guess, and then she's got a backup person just in case, and you know she needs her own little office, her own little bathroom. They, they mm -hmm. just expand these government departments. Like uh, these well, bureaucracies, many, it's a rule. I mean, they just grow as big as they can. How, how many people will the old lady be able to observe? Uh, will it be 10, 20, 30? I mean, because at some point there's going to be a pretty solid argument that she can't keep her eye on everybody. I mean, when I was in school, there was rampant cheating going on uh, in certain classrooms that had as, as few as 20 people in them. 
Uh, so You'll you know, be asked up to 10 questions from a list of 100. Up to 10. Okay. 10 gotcha. whole questions. It's horrifying. Yeah. I can't imagine the bureaucracy that would pile up behind You can't imagine questions. it, apparently. You're not even trying to. Derek J. and I have given you two realistic exa- a few realistic examples of maybe, what could possibly happen. Maybe that uh, if you uh, exclude the most ignorant of people from voting, you won't have as large of a government, and this will be a shrinking of the government. I doubt it. Because then, you know, one thing I just thought of is this lady could be corrupt, right? She could just uh, hand out pre-answered tests to her friends and then make sure that uh, mm-hmm. she changes the answers on people she doesn't like. I mean, th- yeah, it, maybe it's unlikely, but we see people in government cheating and, and committing fraud all the time, getting away with it. Yeah, I think it's sad, Mark, when you uh, trust the government to make the government better. I'm sorry, The government I just don't already think that has works. restrictions on people voting, Ian. It's not like it's something new or different. Every single state has yeah, all kinds of restrictions. And I think more people should be able to vote. I think uh, I was actually in the state house the How other day. How many times do you think you should be able to vote? Once I was. Oh, but what are you going to do to stop them? Because what you propose is no restrictions at all. You don't want people to even have to show an ID when yeah, they I go never vote. show ID to vote. Right. So, I mean, if you don't show ID, that means you can go to a few different polls and vote, right? Well, if you're a dishonest person who's willing to risk felony charges, then I suppose you could do that. How in the world are you going to get a felony charge when you haven't shown your ID anywhere? Prove I was there. Well, I don't know. They, they have, might have security cameras. Right. You or... don't know. You just want to grow the size of government by letting people vote. Is it as a many problem, Mark? Want. Because right now in New Hampshire, we've got the uh, allegedly the, one of the smallest governments in the United States, and we also they let have... anybody vote just by signing a piece of paper. The claim is is that we have the most cheating on our voting too, because it's the first How do in they the nation. Prove private. That? I, all I can tell you is is that I have done an interview. If, there, if there's the most cheating going on in New Hampshire, then I mean, obviously uh, correlation is not causation. But if you want to, you could correlate that too more cheating means lower uh, smaller government because then new hampshire has a very small government and compared to a lot of other states most of the cheating goes on from a national on the national um, election during the primaries so it doesn't oh, actually so you don't think to- they vote for state offices during those elections not for primary well they do for primary the, in the primaries but the people who are going to win are usually the people going to win anyway i mean you're only voting for democrats or republicans you pick your side and then you're and you know so Daryl's in Austin, Texas. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek J, and Mark. Yes, if you're talking about limitations on people who can vote, Texas and their constitution, which was written in 1836, I think, um, has a thing is flat out says an idiot may not vote. <laughs> <laughs> is it enforced? <laughs> um, I don't know because the, um, of course, you know, our term idiot now is. Their term idiot back then would have been somebody who did not have the mental capabilities to understand who they were voting for or why. Our term idiot today is a little bit more broad. Hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to share, Daryl? That's about it. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for the call. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. I was in the How state about house the How other day. How about we only let the people who are in mental asylums vote? That's ridiculous. You're not going to be in charge, and you're not going to be making rules like that. So I'm not let's get out of the land rules of, at all. What let's are you get out of the about? land of ridiculous uh, nonsense fantasy. And that's the other thing: you are not going to be the one who writes any proposal to restrict uh, mentally challenged people from voting or uninformed people from voting. I say, if you're taxed, you should be able to vote. And that's why I was in the state house the other day when there was a proposal. Now, you, Excuse me, can on. I finish the damn well, sentence? Well, I was in the state house the other day when the proposal was to allow uh, people who are 17 to vote in a primary. Basically, I'm, I'm summarizing the proposal. But I think if you're 16 and 17, you should be able to vote. If you're paying taxes at a job, uh, if you're paying taxes because you drive a car, then you should be able to vote on the people who decide those policies. But Shouldn't me, you? Let me ask you this. Are you talking about net taxes or just uh, any taxes at all? What does that mean, net so taxes? You get sales taxes, right? So like an eight-year-old, if he buys a pack of gum, uh, should have a say over that. Oh, well, that's an interesting right. point. So anybody who buys anything is going to pay some kind of tax to something. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, at that point, you're like, well, my baby, my one-year-old isn't <laughs> old enough to hold the pen, so I'll just do it for them. And he's a Republican, I can tell. <laughs> right? So, I mean, you know, hello, stupid idea. But um, the, my question is, is that, okay, so what if you pay $200 a year in taxes for bubble gum and, uh, you know, the occasional uh, filling up of the gas tank or something like that, but you receive $20,000 a year in sort of supplemental government uh, handouts. Now, mm. are you a net, are you a taxpayer at that point? Mm. Or are you a tax receiver? And are you claiming the people who are on, uh, 
our most vulnerable, which, by the way, are the people who live in asylums and ride in vans to the po- polling booth. Those are people who are net tax receivers. <laughs> um, are you saying that they shouldn't be able to vote because they don't pay taxes on a – are you just saying anybody who ever pays one penny of tax ever should be able to vote? Well, I think generally the rule that if you pay taxes, you should be able to vote makes sense. But I see your point that obviously, you know, certain people who are very young probably don't qualify. There's a lot of people, a lot of different ages. Um, I wouldn't count Social Security in this, but people, for instance, receiving receiving SSI or welfare payments or, uh, you know, mothers and infants. And and then, uh, you know, also there's the earned income tax credit, head of household. Uh, A lot of people get welfare and don't realize it just by filling out their tax forms. I think more kids should vote. Like, that makes sense to me that if an eight-year-old or whatever buys a pack of gum and pays the tax on it, yeah, why shouldn't he uh, have the ability to vote? There's lots of adults who have the mental ability of a child. You could argue Where that- did the taxation without representation thing really get uh, – I mean, why is that an axiom, and why are you considering that to be of any validity? Just because some people were willing – used it as a motto and were willing to pick up guns as, and use it violently? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's, it, that's, it's a stupid reason to use that as truth. Well, whatever. So it's we a call fine it idea. I mean, if you're being taxed, shouldn't you have a say in how those taxes are being spent? I mean, that makes sense to me. And I think that if you wanted to cut it off at the age of consent, uh, then that would work. And in New Hampshire, that's 16. I don't really care um, what age doesn't mean that much to me. Um, I think it's silly when you're advocating for babies or something like that to be able to vote. But age means nobody nothing advocated to me. for that. I'm talking about people being able to show sort of a literacy about government, yeah. and by that I mean pass the ten questions out of a hundred questions that you might get in a citizenship exam. Because we tell people all the time they can't vote unless they pass this citizenship exam. Because they're not citizens. Why in the world is it that you're born in an arbitrary geographic area known as the United States and you should just be able to be able to vote even though you don't know any? You can't name how many states there are. You don't know who the vice president is. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can take control of the airwaves, bring up whatever's on your mind. I'll take the small government side on this and uh, allow more people to vote. Mark wants to restrict, which means he wants to control. And controlling people is expensive and costly. More coming up. Jeff Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, February 9th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.90 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,240 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $219. Antiwar.com reports DHS Chief Jay Johnson is predicting a national security calamity by the end of the month if Congress does not push through funding for the DHS, claiming 30,000 workers will be furloughed. The budget is being held up over a debate on immigration, and Johnson insists that these challenging times means such debates should not take place at the expense of bankrolling huge government agencies. Senator Barbara Mikulski from Maryland is predicting attacks by ghoulish grim predators if the DHS doesn't get its funding by month's end, and also predicted ports along the eastern seaboard could be shut down. Despite those claims, the lack of funding would not impact most Americans, and the Coast Guard is the one who handles the ports, so they're not going anywhere. The only real impact would be some of the DHS employees not getting paid until the situation is resolved. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. UPI reports authorities in China seized 7,600 rolls of toilet paper and 20,000 tissue packets featuring an image of Hong Kong chief executive Long Chun Ying from a factory on Friday. Hong Kong's Democratic Party was planning to sell the products at the Lunar New Year Fair after having already sold 4,000 rolls last year. The toilet paper and tissues featured the leader's face, some with the words lying on the face and others showing him with fangs. The controversy comes after Hong Kong experienced major protests over a plan to allow the public to vote for the city's chief executive only after a committee screens out candidates not backed by Beijing. Students and Occupy Central protesters had taken over many significant parts of Hong Kong for weeks in what was called the Umbrella Revolution. Kelvin Lee King Wei, head of the Democratic Party's Creative Media Division, told South China Morning Post, apparently Beijing has escalated its attack on the Democratic Party after the the Occupy movement in all ways. They hope to mute our voice with such suppression and eventually allow only pro-government voices in the city. But I am sure these attempts will not succeed as we will only be more vocal on the democracy cause in the future. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports leftist Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras laid out plans on Sunday to dismantle Greece's cruel austerity program, ruling out any extension of its international bailout and setting himself on a collision course with his European partners. In his first major speech to Parliament since storming to power last month, Tsipras rattled off a list of moves to reverse reforms imposed by European and international monetary fund leaders, from reinstating pension bonuses and cancelling a property tax to ending mass layoffs and raising the minimum wage back to pre-crisis levels, showing little intent to heed warnings from EU partners to stick to commitments in the 240 billion euro bailout, Tsipras said he intended to fully respect campaign pledges to heal the wounds of the austerity that was a condition of the money. Greece would achieve balanced budgets, but would no longer produce unrealistic primary budget surpluses, he said, a reference to requirements to be in the black excluding debt repayments. In a symbolic move that appeared to take direct aim at Greece's biggest creditor, Tsipras finished off his speech for the pledge to seek World War II reparations from Germany. Tsipras ruled out extending the bailout beyond February 28th when it is due to end, but said he believed a deal with European partners could be struck on a bridge agreement within the next 15 days to keep Greece afloat. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
A new video game is being criticized for its harsh portrayal of barbed wire. Here's Game Bites' Caitlin Torres with more. Bethesda's The Evil Within is a nightmarish adventure that shows bloody and rusty barbed wire being used to hurt innocent people, which has angered the nation's barbed wire producers. Barbed wire is a positive force for good. It protects our junkyards from scrap metal thieves and helps keep our cattle ranches safe from rustlers. But Bethesda thinks it's okay to ignore all the benefits of barbed wire and make it look like some scary thing used by murderers. The designers have promised that the game will feature prominent messages extolling the virtues of the sharp steel fencing. But barbed wire groups say that it's too little too late. If Bethesda wants to make this right, they should have the main character go behind a fence and then be safe from monsters because they can't climb over the barbed wire to get him. Now that's a game I would play. Let's hope Bethesda listens. Thanks, Caitlin. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Still to come here tonight, the, uh, the, the really excellent testimony by Kyle Tasker. He's a state representative who actually committed civil disobedience inside the State House uh, Legislative Office building here in New Hampshire a few couple weeks ago. The video's up now over at freekeen.com. We'll play the audio here in a little bit. Plus, dancing got two teenagers suspended mm -hmm. at a dance. So dancing at a dance, at a school dance, apparently was a suspendable activity, and it didn't, from what I understand, it didn't have to do with the way they were dancing. Because some people are critical of, like, the style of dancing, like grinding or whatever it is that the, the kids supposedly do today. We can get into that. Uh, the toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. Derek J. has that story. But first, let's go to your calls and thoughts. We've got Tom. He's on the line in California via Skype. Hey, Tom. Hey, how you doing? What's on your mind tonight, Tom? Well, I'm calling to participate in a discussion about who should be allowed to vote. Okay, sure. Because uh, Mark said last hour, for our listeners just tuning in, Mark said that he doesn't think so-called stupid people should be allowed to vote. He also doesn't think uninformed people uh, should be allowed to vote. But I repeat myself. <laughs> well, I'm uninformed on some stuff, but I don't think I'm stupid. I think we're all uninformed on some things. Well, there you go. There's my segue. Because uh, are you guys aware that the Founding Fathers originally had it set up so that only property owners could vote? Yeah, pro yeah. white 21-year-old males that owned property. Well, I don't think, no, it wasn't re reduced to white 21-year-old males. But if you were a property owner, uh, you could vote. And I, I think that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, property owners have skin in the game. Um, they care about their community. They're not going to pick up and leave tomorrow. Um, you know, they're there, they're, and they're part of the community. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, it's not a terrible proposal, I guess, if you're going to restrict voting to have people that have a real a lot of skin in the game. I, I guess I understand where you're but coming from. What are you going to do? Have somebody out there from the Register of Deeds making sure that everybody is really a property owner that's coming through? Well, well, no. You send the ballot, to, the ballot to property owners. You already have a list for the tax rolls of property owners. What if I want to divvy up my property uh, into little tiny little parcels and sell that off? Will there be a, a minimum size that the property has to be? <laughs> That's not going to work here in California on the property I live on. It's 160 acre minimum. So um, That's funny. <laughs> you're not going to be able to uh, make the property parcels too What if small? the property is owned by a trust or a corporation, but you live on it and you own the trust or corporation? There's a good reason to own your property yourself and not put it into a trust, isn't it? If you're a nationally mm. syndicated talk show host, you might get uh, some visitors at your house. That oh, are armed he's come up you. with a restriction you don't support on voting I'm there, just, Mark. Uh -huh. I'm just pointing. <laughs> hey, thanks, Tom, Look, for the call tonight. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I understand that voting is a statistically insignificant act. If I was restricted from voting, it wouldn't make... And I am in the but state yeah, of you're Florida. You're willing to spend all kinds of time and other people's money on restricting that insignificant act. No, no. I'm talking about singularly for me, um, like whether I vote or not vote is statistically insignificant. However, if a percentage of people who are uninformed are not able to vote because they can't pass a U.S. citizenship test, even though they were born in, uh, you know, in the United States. Can you pull up the citizenship test? Maybe we can actually get some of the questions. I'm just curious to know what sort of things they ask on there. Let's go to Rick listening in Montana. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Rick. Yes, hi. I'm 
Call from Montana. How are you tonight? Well, it's just splendid. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yes. Uh, boy, last last week, I've been listening to your podcast for years. Oh, great. Normally, I don't listen live, and uh, I've never called in before. But Mark and Cantwell really had me storming mad last Thursday. What about? <laughs> I mean, I, I felt like I was listening to Fox News. Oh, no. I really did. I mean— it sounds so prejudicial. It was ridiculous. I, really? I did point what out. the issue? Yeah, it's the voting, I assume. It was the voting yeah. issue. Now, I yes. did point yes. out that uh, restrictions as far as tests on voting have a very unpleasant history more than You once. do sound prejudiced against uh, uninformed people. Oh, right? I am prejudiced against uninformed people. Well, I don't think they should be able to vote. it wasn't only against uninformed people last week. It was, it was against women. It was against really? women. people of color. What? Really? Um, yeah, when, when he was talking about uh, the test that they used to give down south uh, for uh, co- people of color, you know. Uh, what I say? How about this suggest? How about this suggestion? Anyone convicted of uh, taking another life can't vote anymore. That's the truth in Florida like and several other there? states. Well, maybe. It what was it that Mark said? I mean, you're saying right, you're making a claim that I, I I do not believe that I made some kind of bigoted and prejudicial statement. I don't and I'd think like Mark is it. a racist. I would be shocked to hear. Well, I, I, I'm not. I should apologize. I'm not calling you a racist, but a lot of times, Mark, when you're speaking, you come off as being a prejudicial person. I don't know what you're talking about. I need to, I need an example. Um, well, the example last week I can give is when you and Cantwell were both talking about uh, people who shouldn't be voting down, and you talked about the test that they used to give down south, how difficult yeah. and uh, stupid the test was. Uh, it just, He talked about that tonight, and he was talking about it as a historical example. I don't think he was talking about it because he was advocating – that a test only be given to black people. I don't think that's what, what what you were saying, Mark, was that in the past there was a test given in some parts of the South specifically to black people to try to keep them out of voting, and it was written in a way that not any no one could pass this test. That's what you were talking about, right? Yeah. Well, well, and if, if and you know the idea of uh, everyone having to take this citizenship test that people coming to this country have to take. If you've ever looked at that test. Ninety percent of U.S. citizens would not be able to pass that test. As I understand I'm a it, that's very the case. Educated person, and uh, so you know. Well, I say we have a look I at it. I got it right here. Anyone's vote away. I I believe taking anyone's vote away is uh, ripping their ripping them off. With their yeah, if you're going to take away right somebody's to uh, ability to vote, then you should also make sure they don't have to pay taxes, I think. Thank you for the call, Rick. I appreciate it. Then you, Mark, can have your own little voting system with all your buddies or whoever it is that would qualify, and you guys can pay all the taxes. That <laughs> sounds like a good deal. I'd be happy to opt out at that point. I, yeah, I'm fine with that, too. Let me, uh, you know, let, let me secede. It won't be a problem at all. Um, so give me examples of these questions. What's got the supreme the law of the land? Uh, well, m- there are no supreme law of the land. It's the man- men in charge who are the law of the land. They okay. do whatever they want. Um, <laughs> You're what disqualified. Do you think the, what do you think the answer to the question is? Probably the Constitution. Okay. Um, this one, I think, is uh, probably pretty, pretty difficult for anybody. By the way, you can get it at audio if you can't see it. Okay. Um, so, you know, just proving that they've got it. You know, they're, they're, they're letting anybody take a shot. Uh, what does the Constitution do? That's a, I think, harder. I don't, I don't think that's. that's the, is this an essay it's question? It's supposed to restrict it, the very the, short essay. Restrict the powers of the federal government. Um, it says here sets up the government, the... defines the government, protects basic rights of Americans. Mm-hmm. I guess that would be the Bill of Rights. I don't know if that qualifies as the Constitution. I mean, it's the, it's amendments to the Constitution. Okay. So both of these questions and answers have not been accurate. By by my definition. Oh please! No, really. I mean, let's right. Be, let's be real. If a libertarian walks in and takes these essay questions, he'll be disqualified. If a libertarian yeah. walks in, he knows the answers to the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. the supreme law more. of the land. Yeah, I want another one. Is the Constitution? There's really no arguing about that. Um, the idea of self-government is in the first three words of the Constitution. What are the first three words? I have no idea. The first three words of the Constitution. Of we, the United States of America? I guess we the people, but I thought that might have been the Declaration of Independence. No, so I have was, no idea. Uh, no. Um, we the people. What's that have to do with self-government? That's what they claim. 
<laughs> that wasn't really the question. The question is, period, what are these What are these first three words? Okay. I could have guessed that one. Yeah. Okay. What is an amendment? Uh, that's something that the Congress passes to change the Constitution. A change. Okay. Or an addition. Uh, both of those are acceptable. Oh, by the way, the previous ones were acceptable, too. So it sets up the government. I guess this is ORs. Sets up the government, defines the government, protects mm -hmm. basic rights of Americans. So you could have answered any of those. How many those. times do you get to retake the test in your little fantasy world, Mark, if you uh, if you botch it up once? You I don't really know that. You get as many tries as you want. See, this is one of the things I really uh, well, confused me about taking my driver's license test when mm -hmm. I did it when I was 16 years old or whatever. Is There are people in there. You, you could take it several times in a day, more than one time in a day. Not when I took it. Yeah, you could you could your uh, the the written. I can tell you that. No, not when I took it. Well, Maybe it they was, changed it. it was More the coming truth. up here, eight fifty five, four fifty free because I failed the written one. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least ten thousand or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, unemotional Mr. Spock. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. 
That's FFF at FFF.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here to bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have there. We give them away. If you want to help support Free Talk Live, you can do that by uh, going and shopping with us at shop.freetalklive.com. ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. Whether it's Bitcoin or Litecoin or Dogecoin, whatever your preference is, they're all available over there at expresscoin.com, including a few others. It's fast, safe, easy, inexpensive. Uh, really, when it comes to uh, getting cryptocurrencies, expresscoin.com has the lowest of fees. As a matter of fact, you can forego all the fees if you use coupon code FTL and you order less than $40 worth of uh, your crypt favorite cryptocurrency at expresscoin.com. That's no fee at all if you use coupon code FTL and you purchase less than $40 worth. So you can use a money order or a check um, to order from crypt, uh, ExpressCoin.com. I've done business with them. Ian, you have too? Oh, yes. Yep. And will again. You just start it all off at ExpressCoin.com, whether in the U.S. or Canada. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their app. It's ExpressCoin.com and use coupon code FTL. All right, let's continue here. Still to come, the dancing, the, the two guys dancing at a uh, local or a school dance got them suspended We'll explain more about that here. Derek J. has the story. Plus, still to come, the video footage from Kyle Tasker's epic testimony in front of the Criminal Justice Committee here in New Hampshire, which essentially was civil disobedience. We'll explain that as well. But first, Von Newcomb is on the line listening in Springfield. I love that name, Von Newcomb. Yeah, it's good. Uh, did your mom give that name to you? <laughs> Actually, no, she didn't. Uh, she gave me a bastard name, so I changed it. That's a pretty cool name. Is it, are you related to Duke Nukem? No, but all my friends tell me I look like him. <laughs> all right, go ahead with your thoughts. All right, uh, I know this is a little off, you know, off uh, into left field, but uh, I was getting into a conversation with a friend of mine, and I couldn't, I couldn't seem to shake his stance that intellectual property is a necessity in order to facilitate innovation and his uh his premise is that if you don't protect people's ideas that people won't have any incentive to to create these ideas because somebody else you know because there's always going to be that fear that somebody else can do it cheaper uh and with higher quality this was that was my dispute no. when it came to the intellectual uh, property debate. Sounds good on its face. Yeah, I mean, you know, why would people do things if you don't put incentives in front of them? And the fact is, is that humans operate from all kinds of different incentives. I'm not claiming that there's no such thing as intellectual property. Um, I think that that does exist, and I think that there would be protections for intellectual property in a free market system. I would say, however, that the government has no business being in, involved in that uh, because what it ends up being is a sort of a police, a world police force for the rich. And I'm not really interested in that one. <laughs> However, um, you know, usually when people make this claim, you end up running them into a corner. So you'll say things like, well, um, in the clothing industry, you can do anything you want. If, uh, you know, some wild clothes uh, fashionista guy creates or gal creates, uh, you know, a really beautiful dress within months, weeks Somebody's copied it, you know, if it's popular, somebody's copied it and put it out at a much lower price with a different label on it. The one exception to that is a name brand. So if it's covered in like Gucci G's or something like that, you mm -hmm. can't copy that because that's their logo. But you can copy a logo, but you, I mean, I'm saying uh, logos are protected, but the cut of fabric is not protected. So the colors, the way it's cut, the way it's right. put together, the way it's sewn, all of that. All these things you can do, abs you know, 
the companies make a business out of just making, uh, you know, copies of other people's successful work in that industry. But somehow or another, the fashion industry continues to roll on and people without the incentive of uh, intellectual property continue to innovate. There's industries, uh, plenty of other in industries that it's like this, too. And you know, Dr. I mean, Mary Ruart gives good examples on this, too, from an industry that at one time did not have this protection but does now. And, of course, uh, she's talking about the pharmaceutical business, wherein I, th I think she gives the example of, like, Bayer Aspirin, for instance, that aspirin, anybody can make aspirin today, right? There's a certain time limit on those patents that they expire, right? That's why they have generic drugs that are available in the marketplace. And, of course, aspirin, whatever, if there ever was a patent on it, uh, has expired All a long gone. time ago. But I, don't, I, think she, I think her point was that it, there never was. What happened was Bayer was the first to market and because they were first to market, they got name name brand recognition out of that. That has sort of carried with them for a long, long time. Bayer is one of those names that's synonymous with aspirin. Uh, most of the are, most of the costs of getting a, a drug to market are intellectual property costs and F, uh, FDA hiring costs. lawyers. Yeah. yeah, they're 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 government costs and not the cost of research and development because that's the next thing he's going to trot out. And it's a good thing to to point out is is that there's a cost in research and development for new drugs, but companies are willing to bear those because they did in the past, and um, they were able to get things to market, and they were able, able to make plenty of money doing it, yeah, and then people a good would point. copy them. If they release a product, release a drug to market, and if a competing company can go in, reverse engineer it, and then copy it the next day... The idea generally would be, well, well, that would be a disincentive. But what you're saying, Mark, is they're spending so much money on the applications, and the lawyers, and the challenges, and all of the nonsense that surrounds patenting, that if they could take that money and actually invest it in research and development instead, they would be able to come up with the next great, uh, greatest thing as well, and the next one after that, and actually focus on making drugs or making whatever their product happens to be, rather than focusing on uh, legal stuff and liabilities and, and lawsuits. Um, and isn't that what we'd prefer companies be doing is focusing on what they're good at and that's making things? But yeah, that does mean that competition would be increased. And that's a good thing, too, isn't it? Having the, uh, you know, knowing it, it, that it drives innovation, right? Knowing that your competitors are constantly nipping at your heels rather than th knowing that you've got a what? Fifth, what is it? 15 years with drugs? I don't even know. It's 17. The, yeah. Knowing that you've but got a couple do, decades then, to just that's sit back. It. That's not even it, though. Then they for reformulate after the 17 years. They do something. They change it slightly chemically and mm. then they try out basically the same drug with a different name and um, slightly different chemical makeup, and then they base they essentially don't put even put the stuff out anymore. That's where the generics come from. Von Newcomb, anything Yo. else you want to share? Well, I mean, uh, these are these are valid points. Don't get me wrong, but um, in this guy's case, he's like personally invested in an invention, right? Yeah. And it's not anything complicated like a pharmaceutical drug. It's more, much more simple. Like um, <clears throat> if you guys have ever like fooled around with tabletop gaming, mm -hmm. it's a it's a special type of laser pointer. Okay, so this isn't rocket science or or you know like crazy you know milligram uh, computations on uh, on pills or anything. Does this it's guy own any patents or, already? No, he just he he has filed for his patent. I see. Well, I and wish him so, luck in making uh, millions and millions of dollars on a slightly modified uh, laser pointer. But uh, you know, I, I I have a doubt as though he's going to retire on that. Yeah. The other thing you got to watch out for are the what they call the patent trolls. These are attorneys who will come in and take advantage of poor inventors who. Really, they're just trying to make a break. They're trying to make get out there, get their product out there, and they uh, essentially buy their idea from them in very sneaky ways, and then they sit on them. There's more coming up here. It's Free Talk Live. Thanks, Von Newcomb. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy. Until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's togethersave.com. Togethersave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. Togethersave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at togethersave.com. 
This is Rick Osick, president of Famous Footwear. Our company is working together with the March of Dimes through March for Babies to raise money and awareness about the serious problem of premature birth in the U.S. As a business leader, I know that babies born very sick or too soon cost businesses billions of dollars each year, in addition to the emotional stress on employees and their families. That's why Famous Footwear is committed to raising funds to improve the health of moms and babies everywhere. Won't you please join us in the March for Babies? Start a team today at marchforbabies.org. Free Talk Live. It's obvious the government expects people to pay taxes, whether or not they have a law. They are a band of marauders. They are a violent band of thugs, and in my opinion, they're a group of strangers. I mean, if I all of a sudden wrote up an invoice for you, Robert, and send it to your house saying, you owe Free Talk Live $5,000 this year, or if you don't pay us, we're going to send some people after you to punch your face in. Would you cut me a check? I mean, because that's essentially what they're doing. That's essentially what the IRS does. They write a bunch of strangers, people they don't know, an invoice, and they include a bunch of obscure instructions that you're supposed to understand. And then at the very bottom, it says, if you don't follow these instructions to the T, we are going to charge you with a criminal offense and throw you in the clink. This is a threat. And I don't take kindly to threats. I don't know about you. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this Today, this is you ain't gonna make. Wait, 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 wait,
most of the time they'll throw you right out, especially, especially if you're you and I. with a video camera. <laughs> and I am banned from this school. So it's very unique. You're and, banned uh, on weekdays, 6 a.m. Yeah. to 6 p.m. If your ban is the same as mine, I yeah, it is. it is. And I went and I said hi to some bureaucrats and uh, the, some people were very friendly. Others stiffed me. They really? just said nothing. It was, uh, it's an interesting experience anytime you get to bring a video camera into these allegedly public places. So, uh, yeah, you can see that, and you can also see uh, Freedom Fiends and Cop Block Radio, and I do a bunch of other podcasts uh, pertaining to Bitcoin. issues of freedom. Yeah. So, very cool stuff. A lot of it, all of it actually is free. And, of course, you accept uh, contributions, correct? Bitcoin? Of course, yes. Bitcoin I love only? Bitcoin. Still Bitcoin only, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, except for my one fundraiser, I'm taking the local Keen police to the Supreme Court here oh, in right. New Hampshire. And for that, I do accept dollars. And that's all over at DerekJ.me. Our toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. You know, our last caller brought up, I think, a good issue, which we haven't really talked about in quite a while, this question about patents. And he's got a, an, an inventor friend who has some kind of a laser invention that he yep. says isn't particularly, you know, something that couldn't easily be copied or whatever. Not that it's that hard for a pharmaceutical company to reverse engineer somebody else's pharmaceutical and then copy that. Um, so I so think why get a patent on it then? Why, like, why bother? So he can rake in some profits well, for the next the 10 theory. years? It's like, oh, I really deserve these profits. Like, if I could just get government to tell people they're not allowed to in, to uh, copy what I've produced, then I'll get all sorts of money. I mean, that just sounds like unfair. Well, it would seem, t- um, so when I was in school, uh, a friend of mine was uh, drew liked to draw cars. Yeah. And he sent pictures of his cars to car manufacturers. Cool. Mm-hmm. They sent him checks. Awesome. Just because really? they, yes, really. Um, they just liked it. Huh. And I mean, to, to get something to market, coming up with the idea is only part, a small part of uh, what it is. So, sure, you know, there's it, manufacturing it, and he'd marketing. Be, he'd be better off going to somebody who's going to manufacture laser pointers and saying, hey, I have an idea for a laser pointer that I believe is going to make, uh, you know, make some money for you and, uh, you know, sign non competes or whatever it is that one does and, and get that idea in front of them and see whether they want to put it out there rather than sort of, you know, the whole patent thing. My point is, if you need governments to restrict creators from making a similar idea and you want the, those people to be punished, then your idea is probably not that good. Well, no, I, I disagree entirely. Um, but let's talk about... No, they're just living in an old paradigm, that's all. I mean, they're, well, they're living in the paradigm They're that- not, though. I mean, the, hold, on, hold on just a second. We use inventions every single day that somebody invented and doesn't get credit for. How come Arg or Tharg, who cr- invented the wheel, doesn't get... Uh, you know, how come all his descendants or her descendants, whoever it was, that invented the wheel, how come we their descendants, all don't get a check every time somebody uses a wheel every day. Well, because it's it's arduous and impossible. Yeah. Patents are completely arbitrary. We're just saying, oh, for this period of time, you have a monopoly on this particular idea because you were the first one to file a piece of paper on it. And remember that somebody's filed a piece of paperwork for a crustless peanut butter and jelly uh, sandwich uh, <laughs> for patents. I mean, patents are just a bunch of hooey. They're the worst and most complicated bad laws that we have in yeah, this but country. You can see that clearly. But the inventors, many of the inventors don't see it that way because they are of this old mindset that, oh, well, in order for me to be a successful inventor, I need to have the government protect my invention so people can't infringe upon it. That doesn't mean, Derek J., that they're necessarily a poor, they've got a poor idea. It just means they're th- the idea of patents is a bad idea, but they don't realize that. They think that's the only legitimate way to protect their ideas from being lifted by other organizations. But what they don't realize is that it's actually patent law that can screw them over in some ways. So I touched on the patent trolls at the very end of the last segment. I think it's worth expounding upon a little bit. Remember, Mark, years ago, we heard about one of these, there was this company that would advertise on the radio and i don't remember what they were called but it was like inventors call us up for your free patent advisory kit and then you'd call up this number and the uh this company would send this info to you and they'd get you all hyped up about you've got it we think you've got a great idea you should come call our marketing team and we'll pitch this out at uh, these different shows like trade shows they'd go to you know 
conventions. They'd set up a booth and pitch your idea to different manufacturers. Was the was what they were pitching to inventors. And you know, this sounds like an easy system. You plug and you play. The inventors don't have the connections, but this company does. So the inventor would say, "Oh, well, great. I'd be happy to do that. How do we work work on this?" And so they'll say, "All right. Well, it costs money to market an idea over at these trade shows. Like we got to buy a booth. We got to hire some pretty girls to go and pitch this. And so it's going to be it's going to be eight thousand dollars. We're going to need eight grand from you to." Uh, to do this. I think we actually had somebody call who gave us all this info because they'd been through this before. If I'm recalling correctly, this was years ago. And so you'd pay these inventors who, you know, these are guys working out of their garage. They don't have a whole lot of money. And but so most people can come up with eight grand if they have they're to. They're scraping. They're calling the family. Yep. They're calling grandma. They're calling mom. They're calling everybody to try to get together $8,000. Yeah, this is my million dollar idea. This is just, my chance. Yeah. Right. And so they, you know, send the company eight grand, and then the company, you know, purportedly goes to these trade shows and they market the thing. They come back later and they say, you know, sorry, Derek, it just, it didn't work out. We didn't get any bites, and uh, I'm sorry, but we we just got nothing out of that. Nobody, oh, no. none of these manufacturers. And you're like, oh my God, that was my life savings. What do I do now? I mean, I thought this was gonna be a big hit, and now I'm out eight thousand dollars, and my invention didn't get picked up. So then, what the company does is they say, look. Tell you what, we'll go ahead and refund you the money if you will just sign over ownership of your invention to us. Whoa. And, of course, at that point, the inventor is, well, they're out $8,000 and they don't well, want to look bad. Well, they'll so. only get a portion of the money back, by the way. I mean, that's... Yeah, the, I don't remember if it was all or a portion, but whatever, some amount. And they're probably that, thinking like, hey, if this takes off, I can still tell my friends, you know, hey, that was my idea and look maybe. how successful it is. Or maybe they just think it's not going to take off because, yeah. well, it didn't work out at the trade shows and I'm out eight grand. I right. can recoup five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars if I just sign on this dotted line here. Okay, I'll sign it away to you guys. Good luck. And the inventor walks away feeling dejected, feeling like they failed, but also with a little bit more of their money back in their pockets, so not feeling like they've been totally screwed over. And then this patent company then has subsumed ownership of the idea, and either they sit on it and do nothing with it, or they actually thought it was a good idea in the first place, and then they properly market the idea and then, you know, make money on it. Or they just hold on to it and sue people who get something close to it. Who use the same idea, right, which is kind of the classic definition of a patent troll, a company that sits on a bunch of patents until they see somebody violating it, and then they go after those folks, like they did with uh, Adam Carolla recently for the podcast technology. Yeah, just the, the idea of well. a podcast. Ridiculous. So that's one way, that's one way that we've heard about that inventors, you know, these wide-eyed thinkers who are just, they're out there coming up with good ideas, they don't know how the business world works or, you know, marketing and all this, and so they get screwed by these lawyers who are essentially using patent law to screw over the guys with the good ideas. That's te- patent law, terrifying. Yeah, patent law is is a morass of just evil burbling soup. I mean, just stay away from that stuff, I think. Um, I mean, there. I, I, I think it can be used in certain circumstances for your benefit, but you got to be very careful. Advocating for this stuff is advocating for IP lawyers. Yeah, those are the people making the real money. On patents, that's for sure. 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number here tonight. Cannabis civil disobedience happened inside the state house for the first time that I am aware of. First time of any civil disobedience that I am aware of. The uh, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We'll give you the audio of it here in a little bit. Plus, illegal dancing. It's in the news again. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. Congress is given legislative power by Article I of the Constitution. Congress's powers are limited, but they are vitally important. Congress can tax, raise an army, pass immigration laws, but if a power isn't listed or clearly indicated by the Constitution, Congress may not act. The Tenth Amendment reiterates this point. Powers not delegated by the Constitution remain with the states or with the people. This fact may often be difficult to see given the powers Congress claims for itself. Consider interstate commerce. Congress does regulate it, but they have interpreted this power so broadly that they now strictly control transactions that aren't interstate or commerce. That's not what our nation's founders intended. It's not even in the text of the Constitution. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Hey, guess what? They've got some great deals for Valentine's Day at guns80.com. They're calling it the Sweetheart Special. 
Gunzady.com has lowered the price way down to 400 bucks up until Valentine's Day. Order your Ghost AR-15 now. Tell your sweetheart that this is the right gift at the right time. Buy one for yourself. Buy one for your sweetheart, too. Your sweetheart will thank you for being so tuned into his or her needs. Get a brand new Ghost AR-15 right now for 400 bucks. Heck, buy two. His and hers. Go to Guns80.com or call and ask for the sweetheart deal. Love is in the air at Guns80.com. Call now, 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. It's a sweetheart of a deal. Actually, it's a steal at 400 bucks. So call Guns80.com at 844-2-GUNS-80. But hurry, supplies are limited. Call 844-2-GUNS-80 or get your Ghost AR-15 today at Guns80.com on the web. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial on in here toll free, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and join us in real life at the Liberty Forum. It's coming up. It's uh, actually going to be March 5th through the 8th. That's a Thursday through Sunday. And it's happening in Manchester this year. Previously, in uh, previous years, it was in Concord the first year. Then it went to Nashua for several years. And now it's moving to Manchester in the biggest hotel, the largest convention space. This is the premier Liberty Convention, not just in New Hampshire, but I would say worldwide. It's an, it's a great time. Hundreds of Liberty-oriented folks all hanging out in the same hotel together right in the dead of winter here in New Hampshire. <laughs> and it is fun, fun, fun. Uh, I've really enjoyed being at the Liberty Forum every single year, and we have the pleasure of broadcasting live from the event. So we'll look forward to seeing you there. In fact, Derek J, I believe you'll be broadcasting live. Yes, I will. Doing Flaming Freedom at Liberty Forum this year. A very special show. I don't remember if uh, Flaming Freedom was ever live at Liberty Forum. Maybe it was at some point in the past. I don't believe so, no. This will be a very new type of episode. Yes, it certainly will. And uh, so you can come out, see Free Talk Live, see Flaming Freedom, and some other great shows are going to be there as well. Go to nhlibertyforum.com. You can learn more about the event. March 5th through the 8th in Manchester. It's at the Radisson Hotel, and I am going to give you some simple instructions, and a few people have taken advantage of this so far because it's a pretty good deal. Uh, Simple instructions on how to get a Liberty Forum basic admission ticket for free. 
Now, the way you do that is you order three nights in the hotel. Easy. If you're going to go to Liberty for them, you're going to want to be there all of the days. And you're going to want a place to sleep. Right. And it's nice to sleep in the same hotel because uh, sometimes there's some drinking going on in the hotel. And if you can just get stumble into your room, that's a lot safer than driving or a lot cheaper than taking a cab. So you go and uh, register for your room with the Radisson. Use code LF2015. LF for Liberty Forum. LF2015. When you're registering for three nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, you register for those three nights. Then hit the forward button when you get the registration email confirmation. Forward that to me at ian at freetalklive.com. And then I will forward that on to the event administrator, the, the, uh, the organizer of the event, and she will confirm that you will have a free ticket as a result of that. Simple, right? So nhlibertyforum.com, go learn more about the event. We'll look forward to seeing you there. There's going to be some awesome guest speakers like Ben Swan and Jeffrey Tucker and Patrick Byrne, the guy from overstock.com, the first billion-dollar company to accept Bitcoin. He's going to be there hanging out and speaking at uh, Liberty Forum and uh, dozens of other speakers as well. nhlibertyforum.com, don't forget to use code LF2015 when reserving your room and then send along the reservation to me at ian at freetalklive.com. But do it before the 12th. That is your deadline on this, uh, and so don't delay. One of the other things that happens at the Liberty Forum, actually the day beforehand, I think, or the Thursday, the first day of Liberty Forum, one of the things that is on the official list of things to do is a carpool or like a bus tour or something like that that takes you up to Concord, which is, you know, what, 20, 20 minutes 30 minutes away, away yeah, or something too far. like that. Uh, you go up to Concord, you go to the state house for a state house tour where uh, people like state reps who are freedom oriented will actually take a large group of people who've never been to New Hampshire before and they don't know how special things are with the political system here, how accessible it is. Like you can walk in with a gun on your hip into the state house and everything's fine uh, here in New Hampshire. So there's cool things about the political scene here and you'll learn a lot of those things when you go on the state house tour. And maybe you'll get to meet uh, some other state reps like Kyle Tasker. We're going to play the video uh, the video here, which I promised at the very beginning of the show. This is from the Criminal Justice Committee. It, it was actually a couple weeks ago that this happened. It was one of the myriad of things that I just kind of put on the back burner. Uh, but, you know, civil disobedience like this is always good to examine and to, uh, you know, to put out there. So he actually committed civil disobedience by pulling out cookies, a vaporizer, and tincture. And the video picks up sort of right as he's brought these items out. I wasn't able to get the camera operating quickly enough because I wasn't there recording any of the hearing. This was a two-hour long hearing about creating a committee to study legalization. I wasn't interested in recording the entire two-hour hearing, but when I saw what Kyle was getting ready to do, I thought, oh my God, i got to get my camera out for this, especially because there's a cop in the room, and I thought there was a chance that the cop might actually arrest him. Here's the audio. Or an animal. So when we talk about health consequences, obviously these things need to be taken into account because there are no health consequences of these. You're not smoking it. So you're dealing with THC, which is a proven safe medical product. It's been approved since 1997, I believe, for uh, medicinal use. So we, we need to get away from this thinking we know everything about marijuana when we're legislating about it, because in, uh, after it passed the House, it went to uh, Ways and Means, and Ways and Means was ready to say, all right, let's just get rid of the uh, edibles. That'll make our job so much easier. What they don't realize is half the marijuana in Colorado right now is being used to make edible products, and if we get rid of the edible products, we're telling somebody, all right, we're going to legalize marijuana, but you're going to smoke it. We're going to literally tell people they have to smoke it. Now, from a, from a public safety aspect, that's a terrible decision. When they now, he's right. Right. I mean, all the things he's saying so sure. far are spot on. Um, but one of the big scare tactics that the prohibitionists are using now that Colorado and Washington have legalized cannabis, actually now uh, Alaska and Oregon, I believe, also in the most recent election uh, have legalized cannabis, is that – the children will get their hands on these pot cookies and pot brownies, and so therefore we need to make sure that these things are illegal. <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, um, I think that one could make the argument for alcohol. I mean, there's all kinds of what rum cake comes mm. to mind. Um, also, what's to stop a child from confusing vodka with uh, water? Um, I don't know if they could. When they taste it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, they spit that right out. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, there there are tasty things like wine coolers, sure. for instance. I mean, what's to stop a uh, child fruity. from, uh, can you know, Confusing a wine cooler for a fruity drink. How about a Mike's Hard Lemonade? Right, those things. I mean, so these, uh, there's really, there's a lot of analogies here. Yeah, and for sure. I, 
I like to use analogies when you're looking at situations because, you know, alcohol is a very dangerous drug, far more dangerous than marijuana is. And we're all worried about a kid getting a marijuana cookie. And I'm worried about a kid getting a marijuana cookie. I don't think it's mm -hmm. a good idea. I don't think people below a certain age should be exposed to these things unless it's for a medical purpose. However, I understand that, um, that you know, you don't want to stop people's uh, rights to do things just because somebody might do something. Yes. Let's get rid of all the wine coolers because kids might want to drink them because they're blue or well, they something. Even have, they even have laws in New Hampshire, uh, a law in New Hampshire that prohibits children from being on a beer label. <laughs> so the thing about cookies is it's worse under prohibition because people make their own pot cookies at mm -hmm. home and those do look like the regular cookies that kids would see when you take away prohibition and allow companies to make pot cookies they're going to brand it like you didn't say hard lemonade you said mike's hard lemonade that's right because it's branded because that's what you would recognize as the particular drink so if i'm looking for pot cookies i'm going to see mike's pot cookies i'm not going to go and sure. see random but cookies. the fear is that somebody will buy these cookies and then leave them somewhere and a kid's going to come pick them up and eat them that could happen. I just see sure it. Sure could. I, okay, so, but beer bottles have a particularly, just a slightly more difficult uh, bottle to open, yeah. right? And so why couldn't cookies have a similar container? I'm just saying, when you a take away the prohibition, container. companies are going to think of these things and say, we want to have a clear branding, mm -hmm. we want to put a, a cannabis leaf right on the cookie, uh, we want to have a container that's a little more difficult to open, not like a bag of chips, but uh, you know maybe something you have to use a scissors for. Yeah, they're like the what that's uh, what do they call that? Those uh, those type that type of packaging that you can't get child in. Childproof. Well, not the blister child pack. Proof. Blister pack. Those things. Good yeah, lord! Because you get a blister trying to open the damn. <laughs> you <thing. laughs> I hate those things. Yeah, those I are take pain. scissors and cut them all three three widths right. around the sides, and that's the only way you can get into those darn things. Well, so those are some solutions, and that's what you're pointing out, Derek J., is that the market will come up with ideas to do this. But either way, there's risk. There's going to be risk involved. But hello, marijuana is already being made in the illegal markets into cookies and brownies and things like that. Um, and so really the reason to have these edibles is to allow people choices to administer this particular drug, THC, and some of the other chemicals that are in cannabis, to administer it in the way that's more comfortable for them. And, of course, he also has the vaporizer out on the desk in front of him. Let's we'll continue the audio here. They can do it without any harmful effects of them whatsoever. Just drop underneath the tongue. But well, we're telling them, no, you're going to smoke that. It's, it's criminal to actually think that the state would do that. So it's too easy to get into this idea that we know everything. We're going we're gonna to try to get a hold of it. We need to study it to make sure we understand that half the marijuana goes into edible products, and we need to we need to include those. We can't just say, oh, well, it would be easier to not even do edibles because that's going to happen. Edibles is going to happen. We need to study this. We need to make sure we're on top of the issue, and we need to get more input than just. We we have a very closed group of people, and not everybody's going to be an expert on marijuana. So we need to get as much information as possible. That's my only input. Now, he's, uh, the, the committee is going to have a few things to say here in a moment. We'll play the remainder of this audio. Uh, coming up here in hour number three, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So far, the committee looks serious about this, but we'll, uh, it gets a little less serious here in just a moment. And more on the way here on Free Talk Live. Plus, dancing gets you in trouble. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, February 9th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,239, up $5. Silver opened at $17.02, up $0.29. Cents. And Bitcoin is trading around $218.50. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Extreme weather from droughts lasting for weeks and torrential rainstorms robbing the country of vital crops for food to snowstorms of 70 inches plus stopping cities in their tracks. Supporting your family through these difficult times is what eFoods Direct does. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash LibertyBeat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, it's a Good Samaritan story involving police accountability. Danny Panzella explains. In Louisville, Kentucky, Louis Mossy came to the aid of a woman being brutally attacked by her husband, Jonathan Osborne, an officer of the Louisville Metro Police Department for 10 years. He had her in a choke hold and he was standing behind her and her feet were barely touching the ground and I didn't know if he was trying to kill her or what. Mossy then tackled Osborne, breaking his own wrist but managing to keep him subdued until police arrived 10 minutes later. Normally somebody's quick to grab your phones out and just record it but I just can't bear to see somebody being treated like that. Osborne now faces charges of aggravated battery, domestic battery, resisting law enforcement, criminal recklessness and public intoxication. He's currently free on a $30,000 bond. For more about police accountability, visit thelibertybeat.com. An offshoot of the hacktivist collective Anonymous took down Twitter and Facebook accounts connected to recruiting efforts for the Islamic State. A video released by the Red Cult team as part of Op ISIS details plans to take down websites, shut down accounts, and expose the terrorist group. Red Cold explains that the Anons involved in the campaign are composed of Muslims, Christians, and Jews, hackers, crackers, hacktivists, fishers, agents, spies, or just the guy next door. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support for Liberty Beat also comes from the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Hear from speakers such as Charlie Schramm, Dr. Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, and Catherine Bleich. March 28th and 29th at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. Tickets on sale now at TexasBitcoinConference.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, February 9th, 2015. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. An alliance of indigenous and environmental groups have publicly condemned the recent approval of planting of genetically engineered trees. The campaign to stop GE trees denounced the U.S. government and the Department of Agriculture for failing to heed the calls of public opposition to the first genetically engineered tree. Last month, it was revealed that the USDA told GE tree company ArborGen that the agency would not regulate the tree and would not stop the planting. On Friday, a British surveillance court ruled that the nation's spy agency acted outside the law by hiding details of its internet surveillance operations. The investigatory powers tribunal stated the government communications headquarters had violated human rights laws by hiding information related to accessing information collected by the American National Security Agency. 
The challenge, brought by Privacy International and Liberty, cites documents released by whistleblower Edward Snowden. A technology safety advocacy group is launching the Turn It Off for Kids initiative to educate parents and consumers about the dangers of wireless radiation from mobile devices. The National Association for Children and Safe Technology has launched the initiative in response to a number of studies indicating possible risk of tumors related to heavy daily use of cell phones and radio frequency electromagnetic fields radiation. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. For details, visit libertybeat.com slash advertise. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, February 9th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Sources are confirming that a man currently on a very intense cell phone call has been walking down the same city block for the past 45 minutes, periodically shaking his head and speaking brusquely to the individual on the other line. <laughs> Please, just give me one second to make one point. Onlookers speculate that the man is in his early 30s and is either talking to a coworker, boss, or possibly his wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, attorney, or some sort of client of some kind. They say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Thus far, the man has walked walked by the same cafe over 10 times. You know, when I was coming in, I heard him say, you're just not listening. That's the problem. So it sounds like a pretty frustrating phone call. He's running his hand through his hair again. I, I cannot believe this. I literally cannot believe this. In addition to poking the air when making a point, the frustrated man has also been observed repeatedly massaging his forehead. Thus far, it remains unclear where the man was headed before taking his call or whether or not the call itself is making him late for something. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, dancing gets some students suspended, and Derek J. has the story about that. Uh, also, you can call in about anything you'd like to discuss. That's why we call the show Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And, of course, you can join us online. You can actually uh, hook up with us via Skype. Our Skype username here is lrn.fm. Now, for those of you just tuning in, you're going to be uh, joining us in the midst of about six or so minutes worth of audio that is pulled from a two-hour-long, two over two-hour-long uh, testimony hearing in front of the State House Criminal Justice Committee. The proposal that actually garnered all of this testimony, Daryl, who's our Friday co-host, he thought that there was going to be hardly anybody testifying on this. Turns out there were a bunch of people, and the proposal was to create a committee to study legalization, to study the idea of legalization. So this wasn't even a legalization bill, but yet all the regular, sort of the usual suspects came out uh, to testify. Almost everyone who testified, by the way, at this hearing was in favor of legalization, or at the very least in favor of studying the question. There were only two people who testified who were against it. One of them, some group called, I think it's called like NH Futures or New Futures or something like that. Hmm. And this is a group that basically is completely against all uh, altering of one's consciousness. They speak out against alcohol and they speak out against drugs. And They're prohibitionists. Yeah, they're, well, pretty much. And, well, and what the, what would t separates them from prohibitionists? I don't know if they actually are advocating for alcohol prohibition again. They haven't had a chance. <laughs> but yeah, I bet if you gave them the chance, they would. And there's also a state cop who shows up to every one of these hearings and trots out all the old lies about marijuana. Does and, he go in uniform? No, actually, he doesn't. Or at least I've never seen him in his uniform. Well, that's good. At least he's one of the people, you know. Sometimes when I see, well, he's cops, still appearing as a state police lieutenant or whatever. Oh, well, that stinks. He's just like I, a detective. Yeah, but it depends to me. It matters whether they're on paid time, like taxpayer time. I suspect he is. Okay, in his case. Um, but Rick Van yeah. Wickler, who works for the government, he comes on his own time. Yeah. Rick is the uh, superintendent of the jail here in actually in Cheshire County, New Hampshire. He was there, uh, testifying, of course, in favor of uh, ending prohibition. Well, yeah, but I mean, you'll notice that the government bureaucrats that want to uh, have more government 
come on government time and the gov- even the government bureaucrats and everybody else who wants less government come on their own time. You know, just going back around to a conversation we were having earlier, Mark, about restricting voting. One thing you could get me on board with as far as voting restrictions is to prohibit government agents from being able to vote. Because something I'd like to see them prohibited from doing is being able to come testify to these committees as well. I think it would be awesome if there was some rule that made it so that government agents on their not on their own time the government agents there under a paycheck you know getting a, on the time clock or whatever showing up to testify for whatever bills or against whatever bills at the state house it would be awesome to restrict them from doing that. What about if the uh, committee says, well, we need a little more information about, uh, you know, this, uh, about uh, b- b- the, the woodchuck in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. So let's call somebody in from the forestry service to tell us about woodchucks in New Hampshire. And they call them in at that point. I mean, cause you could just make a- an exception for them being invited. Why don't you suppose. just have them write a letter? And do it on government time, like because that that would seem more reasonable. That's what they're supposed to do. They're not supposed to go and testify and ask for more government. That's it's what they take do. Though. Longer though, um, as far as writing letters, because then, well, well, I have another question about the woodchuck, and then no, you have to I write see where you're the- coming from, Mark. If they want to invite them in, I would be willing to to uh, to move on. Then they're that. just going to invite them all in. But it, it just seems not wrong. if they're libertarians running the committees. Why should a government agent be able to go and vote himself? A pay raise, for example. Totally agree. And they did this recently at the state house. To the only like, there were four people who spoke against the uh, constitutional carry bill in New Hampshire, and two of them were uniformed police officers who were on, on government time, duty. and well, they yeah. just disappeared at five o'clock. Oh, w- wonder why? <laughs> <laughs> the, yep. Well, the libertarians on these committees, Ian, should be asking: Are you being paid to, uh, you know, be here and testify? Or is this uh, something you're doing on your own time? Like, yeah, that's a good question. You know, th- that should be something they're they're asked every single time if they weren't invited by the committee. Mm-hmm. So I want to continue this audio here. Kyle Tasker's just gotten up and explained to the committee with props, including cookies, a vaporizer, and what appears to be a bottle full of uh, cannabis-based tincture. He uh, has been speaking to the committee. Has been pointing out that. The committee doesn't know everything, and they shouldn't pretend like they do, and that that's why they need to have this study committee to look into the issue of legalization, including the question about whether or not edibles should be allowed. As he points out, edibles are 50% of the marketplace, what 50% of the marijuana is going into in places like Colorado and Washington. Let's continue the audio here. I do support this bill, and I don't think we should allow ourselves to get caught in the past. And and I'm thinking of this. We need to think of it as a smoking is very passe. Pretty soon, nobody's going to want to smoke anything. Tobacco, marijuana, nobody's going to want to smoke any of that. They can just take a little puff off their e-cigarette, and they can do it inside, They can, without stinking anything up. We always hear, well, I don't want to smell that. When it's legal, I'm going to have to smell that. Well, no, you don't. And we can say, well, we don't want them smoking in public. Well, this is what's going to happen in public. And you're not going he to picks even- up the bottle of tincture, and he says, this is what's going to happen in public. You know it. You're not, not going to have a, a clue. So I really think we need to study committee just to get as much information as possible and educate educate ourselves and get a handle on the issue instead of just trying to go willy nilly. This is a, an editorial comment. When I testified in favor of the decriminalization bill, this is the head of the Criminal Justice Committee. Is an older gentleman. Most of the people on this committee are at the very least in their 50s, if not elderly. This is an elderly gentleman who, he just said he testified in favor of decriminalization. He's hmm. the head of the committee. He is about it. started off my comments by saying, I can't say I've never inhaled the defense of the Civic Center in Portland. <laughs> I can't really hear say any in. He said he can't say he's never inhaled. Yes. Yeah. So that's a joke because he's pointing out that he smoked pot at yeah. some point in the past. Now that they have had that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is more recognizing the way people are doing it. And, uh, I, and I, I used to smoke marijuana like I thought if I kept doing it, I was going to win something. Yeah. yeah. Are there any questions? Representative Manager Foodie. So the cookies are from a bakery that's local that we've anybody? <laughs> uh, these are from the luncheon. 
from the cafeteria right here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so they're in the basement at the state house. There's a cafeteria that anybody can go down to and order food during lunch break or whatever. And so he just admitted the cookies aren't real marijuana cookies. So scratch that one off the list. That wasn't civil disobedience. That leaves the vaporizer and the tincture. What's she eye dropper? Uh, this is for my personal stash. And then personal oh. <laughs> yeah. What? What do you think he meant there? <laughs> this is from my personal stash of what? All right, he's not real clear about that. Like, here's the uh, audio again. He doesn't again. really, yeah. Okay. Personal stuff. <laughs> no, this is just a prop for you guys. <laughs> That's what he claims, but I don't know if I believe him on that. Let's well, go on. Well, you didn't ask him? I, I can't tell you what he said when I asked him. Okay. Okay, here we go. Yeah, well, glycerin. Uh, how they make it is they take a vegetable glycerin, and they take the marijuana, and they heat it up right now. Yeah, I was wondering why you had it in the bottle. You can try Something it. Like that. <laughs> hey, so he dodges it again. The uh, One of the older guys says, I just wanted to know what you had in the bottle. And Tasker says, well, you can try it. <laughs> <laughs> so he's being real dodgy about what's inside that bottle, whereas with the cookies, he came right out and admitted these aren't actually marijuana cookies. Now, interestingly, the, the older guy who said, I just wanted to know what was in the bottle, I've seen him be relatively hostile yeah. in the past uh, at these hearings. Again, I've been to countless legalization decrim hearings, and I've sat in front of this committee multiple times and testified. Um, this guy has been hostile in the past and unfriendly. Today, he was downright jovial and friendly on this issue and joking, and I, I don't know if he's going to vote for it, but I suspect his attitude has changed. And a lot of these guys' attitudes have changed uh, over time, as more information has been brought to them, as more activists have gotten involved on these issues, as we've been made possible because of the Free State Project, where liberty-oriented people are coming to New Hampshire to get active, not just on the cannabis issue, but Derek J., you said there was a packed full uh, gun freedom issue that had come out recently to uh, essentially make it so you can legally concealed carry without a permit in New Hampshire. That was just loaded full of activists. Yeah, about 100 people spoke in favor of that. Impressive. Uh, these things are possible when you get numbers together. There's a little more to the video here. Some of the jokes from the committee continue. And I'd rather have them joking than uh, being angry and, uh, you know, acting offended that this is even coming forward and that people are, are coming in to talk to them. They seem genuinely interested in this issue, and they are also knowledgeable about it because they've been listening on it for so long. More coming up. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237.
Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.fm. That's LRN.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You know you're getting closer to decriminalization or legalization of cannabis when a state representative is willing to smoke pot on the steps outside of the state house. That happened, I think, last year here in New Hampshire, and he was willing to be photographed doing it. His name is Mike Sylvia. And by the way, Mike is uh, ranked as one of the top liberty-oriented reps out there in New Hampshire, which is awesome. He's also a Free State Project participant. Um, and then this year, just about three weeks ago, uh, another state representative who's a New Hampshire native didn't smoke pot inside the state house. In fact, he says he doesn't smoke pot anymore, but he used to smoke quite a bit. Uh, but his point, uh, one of the points he was making to this criminal justice committee was that in the legal marketplace, it's more and more likely that fewer and fewer people are going to smoke because they'll have other alternatives like edibles. Because one of the big concerns of some of the people who object to having legal cannabis is, well, smoking's bad for you. Well, here are all these other things. He brings in three different props. One, a bag of cookies. Two, he brings in a vaporizer. Three, a uh, bottle of tincture. And he points out to these folks, look, there's going to be more innovations like this. People aren't going to want to smoke anything anymore as you get more options in the marketplace. And, of course, she's absolutely right about that. We'll continue with the audio here and uh, let you know how the committee handled his uh, testimony. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So Free Talk Live is brought to you today by BuzzBox Coffee. There's only one thing better than enjoying delicious BuzzBox coffee yourself, and that's giving BuzzBox coffee as a special gift to a family member or loved one for Valentine's Day. It's so easy, and all you need to do is call 866-336-6104 or go to coffee.freetalklive.com, and uh, you can select the Give BuzzBox option at the top of the page. Mm -hmm. uh, you can choose any roast or style of BuzzBox coffee, whole bean or specific grind, and you can uh, make your gift one, three, six, nine, or 12 shipments. Oh, cool. Yeah, so you can give up to a year's worth. Um, or, you know, whatever, however long they, they want it. We all love coffee, so why not give your coffee, a coffee lover, a Valentine's Day gift that uh, you know they'll love? Light roast, medium roast, dark roast, espresso, decaf. That's what I get. And it's water, it's water decaf, and that's important. Signature blends, 
Roasters Limited Reserve BuzzBox Coffee offers it all. And for the K-Cup gifts, we uh, sure to ha- uh, have them to uh, include the reusable solo fill. So when you give BuzzBox Coffee as a gift, you'll know that you're giving what's truly the best of the best coffee. It's uh, USDA certified organic, shade grown, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. And it helps support so many good causes like Kiva.org in our case. So giving gifts has never been so easy. And have an, um, and so have an impact and make a difference one cup at a time by giving BuzzBox Coffee for Valentine's Day now. Call 866-336-6104 or go to coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so uh, continuing here with the video, audio track from the video of Kyle Tasker, a state representative, bringing out marijuana-related props in front of a uh, in front of the state house committee on criminal justice with a state cop literally sitting less than five feet away from him, eyeballing him the entire time, looking like he doesn't know what to do. Because does the state cop get up? grab his handcuffs from wherever he might be stashing them and then put a state representative under arrest? No, I think that would be very offensive to the entire audience, including the the board of, you know, fancy bureaucrats who are before them. Right. Well, the state cops don't want to do that because they have a narrative that they deliver on a regular basis to these com- committees. Their narrative is that we don't need to legalize this. It's already basically legal. You can't go to jail for cannabis in uh, in New Hampshire. What? They say that? They they constantly yeah, there are say that. people in jail for cannabis in yes, New Hampshire. Yes, there are. They I are saw lying. Them. They lie to these committees. And so what the last thing they want to do is actually put somebody in handcuffs in front of the committee. Now, there is an argument that Tasker wasn't committing civil disobedience. And the argument for that is that apparently state representatives get some level of immunity from arrest when what? they're traveling to and from the state house and when they are attending the general court. Now, general court is the legalistic term for the state state legislature, and I think it depends on how you interpret this uh, exemption. Like, if you want to call the general court to include everything that goes on in the state house and the building across the street, which is the legislative office building, which is where we were, then you could make the argument that, in point of fact, the officer could not have arrested him legally. But... You could also make the argument that the general court means the full court, where the entirety of the 400 state reps is in the same room together. Just that one room. Yeah, so I don't know what general court means, but either way, I still suggest that this was civil disobedience because the cop may not know that. And if the cop goes ahead and, and, uh, and arrests the state representative, there will be no punishment for the officer. They may end up dropping the charges later on because, oh, well, he's a state rep and he has this immunity. But I don't think that the the fact or the you know the allegation that he may have had immunity in this particular case really negates the fact that it was civil disobedience. He was nervous about going up there. I was sitting next to him prior to uh, his testimony. He didn't look nervous. Well, no, I mean, he... He wasn't nervous as in, like, he was nervous about speaking. I think he was nervous about the fact that there was a cop who Mm. could put him in handcuffs for for what he did. I mean, ostensibly, there may have been enough there for, uh, you know, for probable cause. Like, this, that very well could have been, uh, and I I believe likely was, cannabis tincture in that uh, droplet or that dropper here. Let me continue with the audio, though. Later on, because, oh, well, he's a state rep. Oops. (laughs) Hang on a second. I don't know why. That audio is coming through over again. Oh, yes. Actually, I do know why that's happening. I apologize. I will fix that right now. So we'll continue here with Kyle Tasker, the remainder of the video of him testifying at the State House. Any other questions? I see you have a question. Yeah, just wanted to clarify last time we had the civil synthetic marijuana yes. you had the actual substance and you educated the committee yes. on how easily it's available so that was my question uh, yeah if if you make a phone call you know who to call you can drive to Maine and literally load up your car and come back to the border again I think I've had a comment probably not the wisest thing I ever did about that what we're doing to the medical marijuana bill well, how are they going to get it you know, call the kid next door what, what did he say? <laughs> yeah, he said if they have medical marijuana, how are people going to get it? And the the old man who's the chair of the committee says probably the kid next yeah, door. Call the kid next door. <laughs> I see. That seems to be the set of bill. And legalizing it would affect the market. It would shrink the market for the underage crowd because, uh, like with alcohol, it's harder to get alcohol now for an underage kid <clears throat> to get marijuana. 
which is a tragic state of affairs. And I, we did talk about uh, kids using marijuana. That's bad. Nobody's ever disagreed that that's bad. And if anything, we're saying it'll reduce use. Even when uh, other places have decrimmed, redu uh, rates have gone down with usage. So if we want to protect the children, this is the right direction, not re restricting it more, because then it just makes it easier for them to get it, because everybody's selling it. Literally, ev all their friends. Oh yeah, I'll make one phone call. We'll have it in a second, as opposed to the liquor store. Let's stand outside the liquor store and see if we can get somebody to buy us liquor. No, no, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know why. One quick question. One quick. What would the age limit of the young would prevent? All right, so the question is, what is what should the age limit be? To what? Uh, Decriminalize for marijuana? For cannabis. Or just legalize for it entirely? Either way. The question is, what is the age limit? We'll come back with more here. 855 450 free, and you can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner. Just for signing up, you're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. This is David Cordani, CEO of Cigna. For more than 20 years, Cigna has worked with the March of Dimes to address premature births in the U.S. Thank you for taking time to learn more about how you, and can, you can share your thoughts March for babies on free in 2015. Premature births cause horrible suffering and cost billions of dollars each year. That's why Cigna is committed to raising funds and awareness through our employees, family, and health of moms and babies. The March for Babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special super early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through early March, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. 
Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You just dial in toll free to bring up anything you'd like. 855 450 free. Coming up, dancing gets some high school students in trouble at a dance. 855 450 free. Join us on Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. With you tonight, you've got me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And berries, berries, berries. Sherry's berries, as a matter of fact, are available to you right now. Don't be boring. Show your loved one that you thought some that you thought of something better than the typical box of chocolates. Right. This going is way to, better. Going to the drugstore and grabbing the box of chocolates at the last minute. You're not just boring. It's it's worse than not getting a gift. Yeah, it's cliche. It's too cliche. And uh, Sherry's Berries really is a special product. It's uh, delicious berries, the best of the best strawberries, dipped in delicious white milk and dark chocolatey goodness, topped with chocolate chips, decorative swizzle, or nuts. And you can get 40% off by using our discount code FTL. What you do is you go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and you'll get some delicious freshly dipped strawberries from Sherry's Berries starting at just $19.99 when you click on the mic and type in FTL. Plus, if you use code FTL, you get double the berries for just $10 more. Do it. Make sure you get that $10 bonus because you're going to want to have double the berries because they are so good. You'll want to share them or maybe you'll want to hoard them. Either way, you're going to enjoy Sherry's Berries. Your loved one will enjoy Sherry's Berries. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Your time's running out. So get your order in now if you want to get these in time for Valentine's Day. So uh, go again to berries.com, B E R R I E S.com. If you wait until the day before, shipping's going to cost a little bit more when you do that. So uh, again, that's berries, B E R R I E S.com, code F T L. All right, let's continue here with the remaining uh, the remaining minute or so here in the video of Kyle Tasker, one of the state representatives. He's got a B plus Liberty ranking from the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, uh, testifying in front of the Criminal Justice Committee with some props, including what is allegedly a tincture bottle full of a cannabis based tincture, which would be something that would get him arrested in most circumstances. But the law enforcement officer who is sitting directly, almost directly behind him, watching this entire thing go on, doesn't make a move. He sits there and just kind of looks around. I zoom in on him. (laughs) Yeah, I zoom in on him at least three times in this uh, six-minute video to kind of get his reaction to what's happening. At two points, he just kind of looks nervously around. At another (laughs) point, he is, uh, you know, maybe I'm projecting some uh, some things onto him. But at another point, he's on his phone. I want to imagine that he's texting his boss, asking what he should do about this state rep that's, uh, (laughs) that's brought some cannabis tincture in. Here's the rest of the uh, the testimony. So what he was just asked right before we went to break, what should the age range be? What should the age limit be as far as, you know, if we were to legalize cannabis at the state level in New Hampshire, uh, what should the the minimum age be? Talk about age and the youth. Where would you put the line for the age group that could use it or not use it? I think most feasibly it would be 21, but I would, I would go 18 if that was an option. Just because I think you're going to keep in criminality three, three years of people's lives when you could keep them out of the criminal element. He gets up, grabs the bag of cookies, and uh, and asks the state reps if they want them. And then he walks over and will toss it over to them. And then a pretty pretty good joke comes out of him. We don't want them now, Kyle, when you tell us it came from the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's I'm pretty disappointed good. that he chose a number rather than just saying leave it up to the parents or something. He, he could have dodged that one as well and just said no restriction. Well, I think that uh, when talking about age of consent here in New Hampshire, I mean, there's different ages of consent, 21 to drink alcohol, 18 to, I don't know, be uh, sort of of majority. But Yeah, but those are bad ideas, too. In New Hampshire, a person can choose to have sex 
they have complete license over their sexuality at 16 years old. Now, that's not true at ev- in every state. Some are 17, some are 18. Some have these kind of weird numbers that it's okay if they're 16 as long as they're 21. And like, you know, you know those are, there are different rules for gay sex, too. Oh, yeah. In some states, it's almost it's always 18. you, you got to be 18 to choose whether or not uh, to have gay sex, but you can be 16 to choose to have straight sex. Are there any but, states where it's 16 uh, for, for gay sex? I think uh, so. I think it's 15 in New Jersey where I grew up, and that was younger than consensual heterosexual sex, That's which unusual. I thought was amazing. That is yeah. very strange. But I, I think so. I think it's interesting that you can choose to have sex, which has like really a lot worse. Uh, complications, Some serious consequences. The, the, com- the, the consequences are terrible. Uh, can be quite terrible for for sex compared to smoking marijuana. I mean, you can you can catch. You know, communicable diseases, some of which will kill you. You can yeah. get pregnant, which will uh, tie you up for the rest of your life, honestly. Just you, you hope it's 18, but it's not. Um, so yeah, marijuana, not as big of a commitment as sex, but sex is legal at 16 in New Hampshire. So, but Derek J., had you been in Kyle Tasker's seat, you would have gone all, all the way and said that the government shouldn't decide an age. Yeah, and he could have used the example of firearms in New Hampshire, where there is no restriction Mm. on a child owning a firearm so long as it's given to them by their parent. It's up to the parents in New Hampshire what age they believe their child should be able to own a firearm. I think this is one of the reasons why it's so great to actually have uh, liberty-oriented state reps here in New Hampshire. You don't get this in pretty much any other state for the most part. But the, the more hardcore libertarian voluntarist types we actually get in these state house committees, the more likely is someone is going to propose what you're talking about. Now, it didn't happen in this instance, but at the very least, he did say he'd be fine with 18 and instead of you know sticking with 21, which is kind of the, the safest age, right? Yeah, but think about all the, the people who are in high school who are... Oh, I'm with you. With marijuana, you know, then they're in the criminal justice system. He's saying he's doing them some kind of favor, like, oh, I don't think they belong in the criminal justice system. Well, what what about all those teenagers who are in high school? The 17 and 16 year olds. Sure. I no, I totally agree with you. But my point is that, you know, if you had been a state representative, and maybe you should make a run there, <laughs> yeah, Derek right. J. Um, but if you had been in there and you had said, oh, well, I don't think there should be a minimum age then Kyle Tasker would have looked like a moderate by saying 18. <laughs> right. And so having sort of that radical libertarian position in there, I think makes it more likely that the compromise position will be more freedom-oriented. Mm-hmm. And there are some people in politics who say, oh, well, you've, you can't take the hardcore libertarian position because you don't want to scare people or whatever. I don't mind taking those positions because I, I understand that politics is – it's, there is a lot of compromise that goes on in politics, and, and Tasker was sort of acknowledging that when he said that you know 21 was the more likely one that would, would end up happening, but he would like to see it be 18. So you push for as low of a, of a range as you can or as much of a freedom perspective as you can. You're not going to get that out of these politicians. I mean, these guys are stuck in their ways. They're not libertarians, but at the very least, they're moving in the right direction, and that's really all you can hope for out of the political system is to move it in the right direction. And you can't get that anywhere but New Hampshire. That only happens here. What's the punishment for possession of alcohol by uh, a minor in New Hampshire? It's a, it's a few hundred bucks, right? It's, I see kids going into the um, local courthouse and and taking plea deals all over. It. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I they think that's down why it ends violation, up, I think that's why it ends up being just a fine, Ian, is because most of the time these kids are going in with their parents. That's right. And they write them a check to the state saying, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I had a bottle of alcohol at the party, at the college party I was at. And uh, happens every here's week. 500 bucks for your trouble, court. Yeah, I was out in front of the courthouse this morning actually doing some don't take a plea deal outreach and a couple of the guys that were coming in, they were sort of middle-aged guys and we were all joking about how awful the court was because it's like a really snowy day here in, yeah. in Keene and you know there was some discussion about whether or not they were going to close and of course I pointed out that no, they're not going to close. These guys are always open and you know they have they have lives to ruin. They've got money to extract <laughs> and these guys just thought that was hilarious. Yeah. You know anybody that's ever been to court before knows that. They know mm-hmm. that's true. It's just a bunch of people collecting money because oh, oh, oh you got a you got a, our thing going here. We can we can get you. Yeah. So we'll come back with more here. Uh, Derek J. There's a high school dance that mm-hmm. uh, some folks were attending in. Was it Kansas? Minnesota. Kansas? Minnesota. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I, I can so. understand why you might confuse those two. Minnesota, Kansas. Nothing to do with each other. K is near M in the alphabet. No, no, no.
We'll come back with more here about what happened. They got in <laughs> trouble for dancing at the high school dance. And it's not the kind of dancing you might have predicted. Uh, we'll come back with more. 855 450 free. And there's enough time for you with your thoughts, whether you want to talk about cannabis legalization or dirty dancing. It's Free Talk Live. Majid lives in Nordavin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. On Facebook, on the news, and in conversations with friends, we're bombarded every day with advice on how to be healthier, from gluten-free and non-GMO diets to how much exercise and sleep the body needs. But how much have you heard about alkalizing the body? AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are a holistic and natural way to get your body's pH levels back in balance. Just a few drops in water will help your body rid itself of harmful waste. And even the healthiest of diets can be complemented with your daily use of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Who isn't looking for more vibrance, vigor, and energy? Now buy two bottles of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops and get $10 off your order. Visit AlkaVision.com or call 800-518-7615. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds. Open the door to greater health, vitality, and zest for life. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health. Call 800-518-7615 or head to AlkaVision.com. Fans of the Tour de France will be disappointed to hear that the race has been put on hold for an indefinite amount of time, as many of the world's top cyclists are currently riding over to the creek to check out cool bugs. Our Chad Williams is live in Bergerac, France. Thanks, Rachel. Roads that should be full of bikers are empty this afternoon. Right now, the riders were supposed to be here, making the climb up the legendary Mont Ventoux, but Instead, they rode into the woods after German cyclist Andre Greipel heard that there were a bunch of stick bugs down at the creek and then everybody wanted to go down there and throw rocks at them. That's when Dmitry Moraviev reportedly skinned his knee but didn't care and Irish champion Nicholas Roach announced he saw this big weird frog with like an extra arm or something, but it was hard to tell because it hopped away too fast. Race officials have not put a time frame on when the event will pick up again. People keep saying that this is going to delay the race, but if I know these boys like I think I do, they're going to find some awesome shortcut through someone's backyard. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's 
Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free to bring up anything you'd like. 855-450-FREE. Moments remain here, but enough time for you if you call in right now. With you in studio tonight, it's me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Don't forget to check out Derek's website at derekj.me. Our site is freetalklive.com. On there, lots of free features, but, you know, it does cost money to run a fancy website. In fact... There is an even fancier website being built right now. Uh, Mark, did you watch any of the videos that our uh, techs put together? I did. Did you they like it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that the new website's going to be pretty sharp. I can't tell you when it's going to come out. That's always a bad thing. You never want to announce when new technology is going to come out because you always miss your date. But at some point, we'll have Free Talk Live 3.0, uh, which I'm excited about. And uh, so look forward to that. Stay tuned over at freetalklive.com for that. When it hits... And if you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, you can support the show by becoming an amplifier. It's so easy to do. You just go to amp.freetalklive.com. You can get signed up with any major credit card or pay, uh, or PayPal, or I guess any major credit card through PayPal. And on our site, we have Visa and MasterCard ability as well through our secure system there. Plus, of course, um, actually, another another uh, tantalizing hint for you. In the upcoming website redesign, we are hoping to allow Bitcoin subscriptions for AMP for the very first time ever. So uh, there's some pretty exciting stuff coming up for the Free Talk Live website. So go and check it out and support the show through the AMP program by signing up at amp.freetalklive.com. You can do it for 5 bucks a month. And actually, Mark, right now, um, people who become Platinum, Free Talk Live Amplifier Platinums, which is 25 bucks a month, yep. there's a special offer on the table for them, isn't there? That's absolutely right. What are the details, real quick, if you can recall? I'm trying to come up with the uh, the, the the recollection here. I believe so it's March first through May f- May first, right? Right. So if you're a an ampli- a platinum amplifier by March the first and right. remain a platinum amplifier by t- until Tr- until yeah May the first, you will receive a new cool. Free Talk Live amplifier shirt. Yeah, and not just any old shirt, though. The uh, the gentleman who is basically sponsoring this for us, uh, Michael. Right, right, he wanted a really cool shirt he for himself. He wanted a really awesome shirt. Like, he's spending good money on the quality of the shirts. This isn't some chintzy cotton shirt. This is a tech fabric, a wicking tech fabric. Right. You know, so it's extra fancy and special and it looks pretty cool it's a word uh, word cloud shirt and if uh, if you want to get one of these things you got to be a free talk live platinum amplifier by the end of this month where do we go to see it because i um I, maybe we should like link to it like shirt.freetalklive.com i'll find the facebook pa- post where i put it and yeah, then we can, can link do that. To that okay we can do that remind me afterwards uh, but yeah it is on our facebook page right now it'll be it. um there by uh you know by the end of the show so uh, shirt.freetalklive.com all right, so uh, let's see here. Derek J., what's the story out of Minnesota with the dirty dancing? I mean, was it even dirty? No, I, not in my view. I mean, I saw it on the video, what they did here. And oh, they really? Descri- yeah, and they describe the way that they were dancing. But here's the story from Fox News. Okay. A Minnesota mother is outraged after she said dance moves got her son and another teen suspended. Quote, We were not intending on anybody getting mad about it. We were just joking around and getting a laugh out of people, Lucas Culkin said. It was taken way too far. Now, if I could do some of my own editorializing here. These guys seem gay to me. Okay. (laughs) Just going to put that out there. It doesn't seem like they're out. And I know that there are a lot of uh, teens who don't want to be out in high school. It could be a lot of pressure. Uh, They could be afraid of getting made fun of. But here they were doing something that was intending to get a laugh. High school juniors Culkins and Travis Wilberg are best friends involved in school athletics and like to make people laugh. You just think everybody's gay. Yeah, I think a lot of people are gay. (laughs) The teens said that they had no idea their dance moves at the Bagley High Winter Dance would have these repercussions. Hmm. Quote, My friend picked me up and just held me like a baby and we were just walking around on a slow dance for probably like 15 seconds, Wilberg said. And I wouldn't describe it like a baby. The way that they um, showed in the video, it was sort of like what you would see maybe Grace Kelly or or maybe the people doing and singing in the rain where you like dip the lady uh, that you're holding sort of like in certain ballroom dances. Okay. Okay. School administrators weren't happy. Wilberg and Culkins were suspended for what the school said was, quote, sexually inappropriate behavior. Now, keep that in mind. They said this was sexually inappropriate the mother 
uh, said, uh, I, or the, the student said, I asked for reasons why, and they just kept beating around the bush, I guess. They just wouldn't give us a reason, really. It seems like they were reaching for a reason to punish us. We did the exact same thing in the previous year, and nothing happened, Wilberg said. So they've been together a while. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Other students said they saw more inappropriate actions on the dance floor that went without punishment. Student- like grinding? Uh-huh. Lucas Olson said, Everybody was laughing at them and having a good time. I saw a lot of kissing and groping on the dance floor. Public displays of affection. But By I other didn't, people, though. Right, right, that was other people, but I didn't see chaperones do one thing about that. Hmm. Colkin's mother, Elena, said she was shocked when she learned about the punishment. Elena said, quote, I was, I was really lost for words, and I thought, you got to be kidding me. R- really? You're kidding me, right? She said she talked with school officials who told the boys their actions were caught on tape. She, she said, I'd like to see that video then. Oh, absolutely not. That is against school policies, and that's a violation of other students' privacy. So the, the dancing that you're talking about, it's in the video on this Fox News page, correct? Yeah, and they, they reenact they, it. Right. I'm watching it right now, and basically it's, it's an embrace. Uh, you're, what you're seeing here is an embrace with one of the people who is embracing sort of being held up uh, by the other person. So yeah. I don't find this to be sexual at all. It's intimate. Um, it's definitely not a, something you generally do with your best friend unless you are intimate in other ways. With you the could best be fooling friend. around. I yeah. mean, it's just fooling it could around. Be. <laughs> um, all right, guys. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty right. intimate. At this point, all we can say is what these guys have said. But, uh-huh. the, you know, we've read stories in the past on Free Talk Live over the last decade about how, uh, you know, dancing these days is. Basically, grinding, as it's called. This is the uh, the term where essentially the teenagers will simulate doggy style sex on the dance floor with their clothes on. And yeah, so that's pretty accurate. That, from what I understand, is the most common type of dancing at a school dance these days. To me, that seems more offensive than what these two guys were doing. The doggy style thing is actually emulating, you know, sex happening, whereas these guys are just. They're having a, an, a, an embracing moment. Yeah, but here. they're both men, and see, that's the problem. It's sexually inappropriate. Is that what you think this is all about, then? Absolutely. That's what this is about. Yeah, I would, mother- I would agree that that's likely what it's about, too. If you're talking about, uh, you know, they're, they're only going after two guys mm-hmm. who didn't dance for very long together, kind of fooling around, and you have people who are bumping and grinding like they're, uh, you know, strippers. Uh, yeah. You know, I. Yeah, the, and these are the ones they go after? Yeah, and then they won't show the video. So the mother said her son, uh, and they are most upset, that the school attached what they would consider to be very serious sexual allegations on his school record. Oh, geez. This will, this is going to go down on his permanent record? Yes, unfortunately. So when they apply for colleges, they're going to see this. But this is where the story takes a weird turn. Oh, really? Chaperones allowed another boy... To bring a blow-up sex doll as his date to the dance. So you can have a blow-up sex doll, but you can't dance with your uh, same-sex friend. That's correct. And there are pictures of this sex doll that this man dressed up in a dress (laughs) and brought it in and danced with it. (laughs) Olsen said there were two chaperones and one school officer. And right when they seen uh, seen it all, they started laughing. So obviously they knew what it was, they, the mm. sex doll they're talking about. A uh, student said the chaperones and a school officer allowed the doll into the dance and even charged it admission. That's Elena, fair. Uh, yeah, right. I think that's fine. Yeah. Elena said, quote, it was utter disbelief, utter disbelief that my son could be suspended for dancing with a boy and yet a sex doll was appropriate yeah. for a school dance. Agreed. Boy, I don't know what they can do about this. I mean, what are they going to do? Appeal to the school board and then get a letter of apology at best? I mean, the damage is done, right? Well, school officials wouldn't comment on (laughs) camera about the issue, and they won't release video of the dance. Wow. And that's it. So they're just suspended. Did it say how long? You might have gone over that, but I I may have missed that detail. Uh, No, I don't see how long that they were suspended. Hmm. So, uh, you know, presumably three days. I think that's a typical suspension um, out of school, you know. But I just found this to be, like, shocking that in 2015, 
this would happen. And it's it's pretty clear to me that it's because they're both guys. Yeah, right? I think I think so. I mean, the fact that they could bring a sex doll and that was okay shows me there's some sort of bigotry going on here in Minnesota. Best thing to do, get your kids out of the government schools and get them into a place that is more accepting towards people who are different. Yeah, I they should say. drop out. So, oh, you wrote about that, by the way, over at DerekJ.me, correct? Yes. About uh, young people dropping out it's of school. Don't stay in school. Yeah, it stirred up quite a bit of controversy, the version over at Freekeen.com. I can tell you that. So we'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. It's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, February 9th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,239, up $5. Silver opened at $17.02, up $0.29. Cents. And Bitcoin is trading around $218.50. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at expresscoin.com. Extreme weather, from droughts lasting for weeks, and torrential rainstorms robbing the country of vital crops for food, to snowstorms of 70 inches plus stopping cities in their tracks. Supporting your family through these difficult times is what eFoods Direct does. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, it's a Good Samaritan story involving